Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are. Hallelujah. We are too small to doubt the might of God. Do you know how far God can take you, brothers and sisters? Forget about your age. Look. If you want to receive from God, I'm speaking to especially many of us who are students, you must remove this student mentality and bury it and, and, and know that you are only a student for a few moments. Many of us, this dependency mentality has crippled us. You have graduated for five years now, but you still believe Koinonia is not a fellowship. Koinonia is an apostolic and a prophetic move of God. It's not some kind of campus thing for just young people. Hallelujah. Please be determined that there must be an evidence in your life. Hallelujah. There must be an evidence in your life, brothers and sisters. And this is, this is my goal. I cry before God every time I pray for us. And I say, Lord, please let your people, even if it means not blessing me, no problem. Status is changing, there's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. Prophesy, that's what must happen to you. My status is changing, there's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. One more time, prophesy to yourself. Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way. On my way. On my way to better days. Prophesy, you're on your way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. To better day. To better day. To better day. Sing status is changing. Come on. Status is changing. The word of God is doing so something to you. We're on our way. I'm on my way. To better day. There is a better tomorrow, I tell you. Forget about today. My status is changing. There's no more decline. We're on our way to better days. We're on our way. We're on our way. On our way. That's the destiny of this ministry. To better days, we're on our way. On our way, on our way. On our way. On our way. On our way. To better days, to better days. We're on our way. On our way. You can choose to take the flight or not. But I tell you, God is going somewhere with us. 
to better days. Prophesy to yourself as part of the meeting. We're on our way. That His glory will change something in your life. It doesn't take time it doesn't take time hear me it doesn't take time it just takes having access to the keys it doesn't take a lot of stories and discussion there is what you can hold on to when you catch it you have caught it it will change your life men will talk they will only talk for nonsense you will only be moving like a star that cannot be stopped but the question is are you willing it's not enough to just listen. There is no situation you are in that is the worst in the earth. There are people in a worse situation. But this word has taken them out of it and honored them. It may look like there is a delay. But you must tell yourself the glory of God is changing me. This is already a word for somebody tonight. You may not look like it. Brothers and sisters, forget about it. Your status is changing there's no more decline you're on your way to better days let them laugh at you today your status is changing your status is changing there's no more decline there's no more decline you're on your way you're on your way to better days prophesy to yourself my status is changing spiritually financially in every respect no more I'm on my way, I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way, 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 I'm on my way to better days. To better days. To better days. I'm on my way. I'm on my now pray and say lord give me focus help me to settle with the word whatever distracts me whatever distracts me whatever is robbing my life i'm ready to be a student i'm ready to submit myself go ahead and pray I'm ready to lay down my pride to get what works. I'm ready to submit myself. I'm ready to lay down my pride. I repent from arguing with the word. Give me the keys, so oh God. Let my hands handle them. Pray. I lay down my pride. I lay down my pride. I submit to the word of God. I lay down every argument, every vain talk. I submit to the word. I want to see results in my life. There is something I do not know. Show me, oh God. There is something that connects me to the next level. You are changing the life of others. Don't forget about me. I am willing. You are changing the life of others. I am willing. You are changing the story of others. I am willing. I take my eyes away from my failures. I take my eyes away from limitations. I take my eyes away from criticisms. I am not stiff-necked. I am not stubborn. I am malleable to your word.
Yes, Lord, I submit to your word. It has changed many. It has produced champions and generals. We're on our way. On our way. We're on our way. To better day. I'd like you to see your future and prophesy. I'm on my way. Oh, they will hear my voice. They will see his glory upon my life. On my way to better days. To better days. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We submit to your word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please pick up your Bible, First John chapter 5, verse 4. God bless you. Let's get straight to the word. There is a lot to talk about. First John 5, verse 4. Please pay attention. If you are here, sit down, sit down, sit down. God bless you. Please look up, everyone, before we read that scripture. I expect everyone coming for Koinonia to at least buy a book like this. Praise the Lord all these pieces of papers we have that we throw powerful revelations on it, get something like this. Please, pay attention. Just be a student for a while and let the world honor you. Forget about pride. Please, I beg you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Young and old, rich or poor, whatever you, when you come to the presence of God, just follow instructions. Your next dimension is in the instruction you follow. Hallelujah. Don't be too, don't do big manism before God. For the kingdom is for children. Get a notebook. Get a good biro. Don't come around if, if, if you have devices or phones that you can, you can, you know, record and write very well. Do so. Don't just sit down and be careless. When you are inviting others, let them know that they are not just coming for fellowship. Hallelujah. If you love them enough, buy it and give them. Buy it. There are lots of jotters that we get from wedding. Free. Huh? Instead of writing your problems on it and writing all the people that hurt you, why don't you bring it, sow it as a seed to somebody? Get this. This is my own notebook. There are many others like this. It shows that you respect what God is teaching you. In the book of Revelation, when John saw everything, he told him, write. He didn't say, think about it. He didn't say, crime it. He said, write, for these words are faithful and true. When prophet Elisha was passing and the Shunammite woman perceived that this was a holy man of God, when they decorated his room, they kept a table for him there so that he would write. The ancient wrote, you must write. Hallelujah. Please. When you come, that's why we have time to say hug one another. When we say hug, hug. When we say sit down and listen. No loitering around, walking around, pinching. This is, is demonic. It's not just bad. It's demonic. I'm telling you, it's, it's the spirit of distraction. Your mind cannot do too many things at once. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the word is coming, that's when you remember that, oh, I, I need to do this. I need to do that. Somebody is pinging you. You are pinging the person. It's demonic. Pay attention. Hallelujah. Please, inside and outside, even if you don't have a seat, pay attention. Somebody is smiling and telling you, have you seen their uniform? Tell the person, please, don't distract me. I'm tired of my situation and my life must change. Don't distract me. If you say it once, you won't repeat it again. But by the time you start entertaining nonsense, in the middle of something powerful that should liberate you, the person will say, can you imagine? Was it uh, that we How much did you even say it? This is not the place to discuss all this for God's sake. Of course, we appreciate ourselves. But if you don't place value for the word, it will never change you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. First John chapter 5. You will thank me tomorrow. You may not like me today, but I love you too much to leave you the way you are. Many are already thanking me. 
and those who didn't listen are now listening in a painful way ancient words ever true changing me and changing you we have come with open hearts oh let the ancient words first john 5 verse 4 everyone read is projected one to read And this is the victory that overcomes. What is it? Even replace our with my. Are you ready? Read it one more time. Even my faith. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38 tells us that the just shall live by faith Hebrews 10 verse 38 media you have to really help us today let's see how we can rush I want us to finish on time Hebrews 10 38 it says the just shall live by faith in fact frankly speaking four times in scripture it is recorded that the just shall live by faith but I'll just speak to Hebrews 10 verse 38 Hallelujah. It says, now the just shall live by what? Faith. But if any man draw back, draw back in what? In living by faith. It says, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. The just shall live. Let me interpret it for you. The quality of your life here on earth is dependent on your understanding of what faith is and how it works. And this is what I'm going to be teaching you tonight what faith is and how it works the operation the dynamics that's what i would have taught last week but i was away and and the holy spirit told me no you must teach this my people need to hear it because they need to understand not just what faith is but how it works true bible faith that will produce results for you habakkuk chapter 2 from verse 4 it personalizes it in a very powerful way i love the prophet he said the just shall live by his faith not your neighbor's faith Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4 he says behold his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him but the just shall live by what you will prosper by your understanding of faith you will step into the anointing and the glory of God the quality the measure of the glory and the grace of God you will see in your life is dependent on faith. There are, there are free seats here. Please let it be a tradition from now that every time we begin the service, if there are people standing, some people should sit on their seats. There is a vacant seat here. There is another one that I see. I don't know why there should be those seats. There are people standing outside. Please, ushers, you should know that. Let's, let's occupy all the seats, please. Hallelujah. The just shall live by his faith. Everyone say the quality of my life is dependent on my understanding of what faith is and how it works. One more time. Say the quality of my life is dependent on my understanding of what faith is and how it works. Praise the Lord. The subject of faith is very important for the Christian experience. Um, there have been many teachings on faith. Many, many teachings. In fact, it's been the core teaching in many Christian circles. But there are a lot of misunderstandings about the true operation of faith. And I trust that God will help us to be able to balance it. I want to go really straight to the point and that very, very fast. Hallelujah. It's not that our regular or popular teachings on faith are wrong. But many teachings about faith, please look up. Many teachings about faith are not complete. Faith is an equation. Faith is a formula. Are you following me now? And 
the components must be complete for it to work here and there different men of God preachers great men and women of God have caught certain dimensions of what faith is and how it works but to be able to give it a very balanced scope such that it works for those who practice it is where the problem has been hallelujah let's look at a few um, a few incomplete revelations of faith that have come to the body of Christ number one or some corrections on the imbalances number one it has been popularly taught that faith is believing. No, that's not it at all. Faith is not just believing. That's the point I want you to get. Be to believe is very important. It's part of the equation of faith. But it's not all there is to faith. You see that? For somebody straight up, this is your deliverance. Because you have been taught that faith is just believing. If you believe, that's all. No, sir. I can tell you this categorically. That's not the whole equation. Belief talks of conviction. Belief talks of persuasion. When you believe a thing, it means that you are convicted. It means that you are persuaded. But it does not mean it to produce for you. Please, let's understand that. Belief is part of the process of manifesting faith, but not all of it. It is part of it, but it is not all of it. Please get this revelation. Oh, I believe God, I believe God, I believe God. Wonderful. That's only a step. That's not everything. Many of us, innocent believers, have stopped there. Believing God is not enough. Belief talks of your conviction. It is part of the overall equation, but it is not all of it. Number two, faith is not just confession, mm. body of Christ. Faith is not just confession. I'm dictating it so that you will write. Confession is part of the process of manifesting faith, but not all of it. Please, you must get this confession in the equation of faith there is a point where confession comes in but that is not all there is to bible faith see that many of us have been taught by well-meaning people through the years in our different christian circles across this nation and for those listening outside of this nation and all of that we've been taught that all there is to faith is just speak when you speak it you have it no sir I tell you the truth from God's word and from this Bible. No, sir. It doesn't happen that way. Are you getting blessed? Hmm. So, faith is not just confession. You must realize this. If confession were all that there was to manifesting faith, I guarantee you there are people who would have been living like angels in the earth today because there are people who speak. I'm not against confession. There is a place. Remember in our teaching spiritual laws. There is a place. Confession activates. There is a law of speech and sound. But that's not the only law. So it is true that confession is part of the process of manifesting faith. But not all of it. So believing is not all of it. It's only part of it. Confession is not all of it. It's only part of it. Number three, faith is not just sowing seeds. Faith is not just sowing seeds. Many in the body of Christ have been taught that faith is equal to seed sown. No, sir. Sowing of seeds is also part of the equation. It's activating the law of seed time and harvest, but that is not all there is. You see the imperfections. So when I camp around believing, on one side we have those who believe. Just believe. And if you really believe, it happens. That's not exactly true. Hallelujah. Or confess. And if you confess, that's all. No, that's not exactly true. Or sow seeds. 
the moment you are trusting God for a house, you sow a seed for that house and go and rest and it happens. No, sir. No, sir. There is an equation. God is not a fraudster. Are you getting my point? That, those kinds of attitudes make God look like a 419er. Right? And this is the reason why many people write against men of God in newspapers. They call us all kinds of things. They call us money mongers. They call us uh, metaphysical people. They call us talkatives because the incomplete teaching. See, let me tell you something. Especially for those of us who are men of God here or will be called into ministry. Realize that the church is an institution. Both a spiritual institution and a social institution. We influence culture. We shape people. The mindset in Nigeria has largely been altered through the church. For good now. Are you getting me? Nigeria is said to be the most religious country in the whole world. And this is because of the presence and the influence of the church. There is a place that the church is playing in nation building. And, and that, that puts a lot of pressure on the man of God. Because what that means is when you mislead people, it will create a ripple effect. Right? There are some of you, as you come and sit down under this anointing, as you hear the things I preach, you take them, some of you verbatim, back to your fellowships, your members, because you believe you want them to receive the same result. And that means I must be careful. If I teach you error, it becomes harder to correct it when it has left me. Are you seeing how error grows? Because when you go now and you are communicating to your churches or your groups or your fellowships, it may not be exactly as I said it. It will be based on what you understand. Right? By what I said. And so, the, the error keeps multiplying as it goes down the line. That's why we pray in the spirit for accuracy of utterance. So that we can communicate only that which is consistent with the mind of God. Are you blessed? So faith is not just believing. Never forget this. Number two, faith is not just confession. The word confess comes from the Hebrew word homologio. It means repeat as you have heard. So there is a place for that. The law of sound. The creative power of spoken words. But that's not all there is. Now I understand that there are times that we men of God take this aspect fragment by fragment. And, and I understand that. That's not what I'm talking about. There are people who have taken this in koinonia. We have examined all of these aspects in details one by one. And that is just for understanding. But when it comes to manifesting faith, you must be able to piece up all the fragments together. Are you getting my point now? To complete the equation. Otherwise, what you are doing is not Bible faith. Say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Faith is not just about sowing seeds. Otherwise, what difference do we have with those who just give charity around? There are unbelievers who sow cars, sow houses. Is that true? Faith is a law. Never forget this. Faith is a law, meaning it works anywhere it is accurately practiced. When it is released anywhere. A law is not something that is territorial necessarily. It's a principle that works anywhere it is diligently practiced. Salt is salt in Nigeria. Salt is salt in Bangladesh. Salt is salt in Israel. Salt is salt in Ukraine. Salt is salt in the Bahamas. Hallelujah. A gun is a gun in Nigeria. Right? A gun is a gun in Israel. What a gun can do in Nigeria, it can do in the UK. That's how faith is. It's a law. So write very quickly. The principles of manifesting the faith that works. The principle of manifesting the faith that works. I'm being very simple tonight because I really want us to get this. This is very core and foundational to our understanding and our success in life. Shiva. 
The principle of manifesting the faith that works. Let me have two people, please. Any two people? Come. Please watch this. Stand here, Benga. You stand here. Promise. Watch this. Why is faith very important in the life of the believer? I want you to watch these people. This is... Hold this. This is God wanting to reach out to man. This is the blessing. Watch this. This is the breakthrough. This is the healing. This is the prosperity. This is the new level of grace. This is the insight. Are you getting me? And here is man. God so designed it that there is between God, his desire to bless you and down at your end, your desire to receive. There is a law that connects that. That law is called faith. Are you getting me now? Faith is important because it is the biblical platform that authorizes God's power to come into your life. Faith is the platform that authorizes God's ability. My brother wants to see the power of God and it's not like God's ability is crippled. Lord, I want prosperity. Lord, I want healing. Lord, I want a miracle. Take me to another level. I want to begin to have encounters in the spirit. This is it. This is it. Fully paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. Right? And this is another imbalance that preachers say. The fact that a thing has been paid for does not mean it comes to you automatically. Is that true? I can pay for something and tell you when you go to the supermarket, it's paid for. But that does not mean it has been delivered automatically. See that? Faith. Faith is what connects you. Watch this. This brother is standing desperate. Oh God, would you not change my situation? 10 years, 15 years, nothing has changed. He is born again. He believes in Jesus. He believes Jesus died. He is a tongue talker. Maybe he even pays tithe in church. So seed confesses the word, but nothing is changing because this connection. Are you seeing it now? God is asking that you authorize Him. There is a connection between the power of God and where it is needed in this earth realm. Faith. Are we following now? Between you and that breakthrough is your ability to connect. Are you willing to authorize the hand of his majesty? He wants to come. Make no mistakes about it. God wants to reveal himself as a loving God. The love of God compels him to want to bless us. But the problem is that we have not been taught how to connect. Stretch your hands, promise, and connect this. This is faith. Once you lay hold on this, then there is, there's no limit again. There are many of us, thank you very much, guys. God bless you. And I don't know what they were thinking about. They are thinking, they are always thinking in partition. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> That's why I gave the example from beginning so that your, your desires will not be disappointed. Praise the Lord. Could it be, brothers and sisters, that where you are, where your family is, is not just because the devil is so powerful. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's not just because you may not be praying correctly, but maybe you have not been taught. There is nothing wrong in not knowing. The problem is when you are not willing to learn. Hallelujah. Faith is the platform. Never forget this. This is why we need faith. The platform that authorizes God's ability to be made manifest in a person's life. God needs an authorization to step into your life because he gave man willpower. When he said, let them have dominion, it became scripturally incorrect for God to interfere with man's life just like that. No. He needs an authorization. That's why the Bible says in the book of Revelations, it said, behold, I stand. And what? And what? This is God speaking. Why will he be knocking? Wouldn't he just step in and say, I created you. Open that door whether you want it or not. No. Behold, I stand and knock. And I will keep knocking for as long as you are willing to open it. 
tonight may we authorize God to step into our lives and you will see how small many situations are praise the Lord everybody say the faith of God is at work in me so what then is this equation of faith how does it work now that we know that faith is not just um, I would define faith at the end of the teaching but that the workings of faith, we have little bits and pieces of it. So here and there we confess the word. And we seem to have some consolation, but nothing major happens. Here and there we sow seeds. Very good. But then that's not all there is. Here and there we, we um, do what again? We are convicted. Oh Lord, I believe you. Are you not the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego? God says, yes, so I am. Huh? Are you not the one that parted the Red Sea? God will say, of course. Why are you not parting my situation? And God says, allow me. Authorize me. Authorize me. That's why the Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for every outcome of your life is an irresponsible Christianity. I repeat, the Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for every outcome of your life, meaning I don't do anything all I have to do, after all, I was a sinner. You are the one who died for me. I didn't ask you. Now that you have died for me, make sure that everything goes well. Give me tea. Give me bread. Do everything for me. See that? And there is an imbalance of the grace message that if not careful, stretches to that limit. Where it tells you God should do everything for you. No, sir. There are two dimensions of grace. Let me say it very quickly. I've listened to a lot of great mess, grace messages by different men and women of God and I agree absolutely with them in many aspects. There may just be a need for some little adjustments here and there. Who's that? What's wrong with her? She's sick. Huh? Who brought her? You came with her. Hold her now, protocol, and let her talk. Huh? please hold the mother and let the lady come come you you can hold the mother what's wrong her kidneys hold on please where are you taking her no bring her it's a spirit bring her It's not that she's restless and she wants to go out. It's the spirit. That's what happens to many people when they come for miracle service. Once I come up, you see them restless. They say, I'm going. It's a spirit. How long has this been? Huh? Can she talk? Mama, how are you? How long are you? Her brother. How long has this been? Her kidneys are what? Renal failure. Shika, you believe that Jesus will change all this? As we worship in your presence, there is healing. The Holy Spirit's gentle touch is flowing. Time. Come on, sing. Imagine this were your mother. Jesus, we believe. Jesus, there is Don't cry. In your name. Don't cry. In the name of Jesus, the anointing is on all of you, all three of you. Right now, by the power of the Holy Spirit. I cause this devil of darkness in the name of Jesus Christ. I command brand new kidneys right now. Mommy, brand new kidneys in the name of Jesus. I cause that devil of infirmity. I see you in the spirit. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
renal failure, I curse you by the blood of the eternal covenant. I curse you. 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 Hallelujah. Mama, look at me. Say in the name of Jesus. I am healed. I am. Shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am. I am. Look at me. Everybody leave her. Leave her alone. Come. 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 Help her. Come. Help her. Hold this please. Help her. That devil is a liar. Please put this in. Walk, come, leave her, don't hold her, just guide her, come, come, just turn around, turn around, help her, turn around, come, kidney failure, that devil, is. look at, she's happy, look at what is happening, lift your hands, lift your hands, lift your hands, come, that devil is a liar, let her come, let her come, help her, just guide her, let her come. That devil is a liar. Lift your legs, mama. Go ahead. Lift your legs. Lift your legs. Lift your legs. In the name of Jesus. Listen. This is witchcraft. Your mother would have died on Sunday. They would have told you this woman is dead. She would have slept like that and woken up. Because as I looked, I saw the spirit. And I was looking, I said, what is this? And they were carrying her out. Look, it's better for them to come and die here than to get up. We are not playing games. This just came to prove the teaching. I'm about to say some other things. You must believe. They, they believed God, but they didn't stop there. They would have stayed in Shika, and this woman would have died because I see in a vision, Sunday, they would have said it's over. Huh? Don't cry. Don't, don't cry, gentlemen. In the name of Jesus. Mama, I assure you, you will come back and stand here to give your testimony. That wicked spirit that has been tormenting you. Huh? Go and look. Has she been eating? She has not been eating. Because the Holy Ghost is ministering to me that Mama is hungry. Find something for her to eat. God bless you. Take her. Lift your hands and let's bless his name for one minute. Please sit down, sit down, sit down. Let's hurry up. Let's continue. Sorry about that. There is a spiritual strategy for manifesting faith. Just like we saw. I don't know how long our mother has been, but in seconds. You can authorize the power of God. See, I already sense the healing anointing. So as you are listening to me, if you are sick here, this is always what happens. Because when once, one miracle happens, the water is stirred. Right? Very important. Brothers and sisters, listen. It's not like these guys could not have prayed for mama. There is nothing special about me. This is what I want you to understand. The goal, I know some of you are saying I don't agree. There's, just listen to what I'm telling you. You know, you know as I preach, I, I discern your thoughts. I know what you are agreeing with and what you are not agreeing with. <laughs> Hallelujah. The equation of faith. Let me give you an equation of faith that if you practice, I guarantee you are touching the integrity of the maker of heaven. You will be shocked at what your life will become. It will begin to produce immediate results for you. Immediate results. Hallelujah. Pray in tongues for one minute as we prepare to receive this. We are hurrying up. Please, take it serious. Say, Lord, open my eyes. Don't just hear. Don't just look. See. Rabati shela maharia bala kaparusa pratigede bala rabala. 
inside and outside. Pray in tongues, participate. Krapata balada bakata predege de bele de bos. Kongrati shala predia. Skata balada baka prandege de bele de bos. Open our eyes, we submit to you. Great Spirit of God, open our eyes. And this is the faith that overcomes even our faith. This is number one. The faith of God that produces results in your life always starts with revelation. Bible faith, please hear me, always starts with revelation. You can never manifest true faith until there is a revelation. A revelation. The first piece of the equation of faith is revelation. And there are two dimensions to revelation. Please look up. The first is study. 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 And the second is meditation. You don't have revelation just by wishing. Study. It first starts by searching out. You cannot have faith in what you do not know. I love this baby. Come. Ashes are afraid. She's going to run to her mother now. <laughs> May God bless. One, one of these days, our children will open the service for us. All of them will just hold the mic and blast in tongues for 10 minutes. Oh yes, many of them pray in tongues. At their age, we didn't even know whether... But, but God is doing a lot of work in our children. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's continue. Revelation. So it starts with diligently searching. Everybody say diligently searching. Now, the problem with many believers, you cannot spend your life just reading newspapers, chase magazines, name them, all those kinds of rubbish and expect to have Bible faith. Even if there is a column where a man of God quickly shared something, faith doesn't come that way. Brothers and sisters, there is an investment you must make in studying the word. Look at me. This is your promised land. You must walk through it. Every time you read the Bible, it's like you are walking through your promised land to see what God has given you, to see what has been apportioned to you. So as I study this, I see, Halabakatayada. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall also do greater works than this. As I study, I begin to see, if ye be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command thee this day. Right? That you'll be exalted above all nations and these blessings will come upon you and overtake you. Are you getting my point? When you are studying the Bible, imagine that you are walking around your land of promise. When you study the Bible, you are seeing the things that have been paid for. Are you getting my point? That cancer is killing you and you take the Bible and you search. And you see where he hung on that cross and he said, it is finished. But that has not entered you. You are aware. Remember, you are getting revelation and this is only the first part. That's why I'm telling you what many people call faith is not faith. So I begin to walk around the promised land. Like he told Abraham, he said, from where thou art, lift up your eyes and look eastward, northward. That's what you do. When you begin to study, it's like you are walking through your land of promise. Brothers and sisters, you may be soaking Gary, just walk through the land. You are, you are no problem. There is no stove to boil the Indomie. Break it. As you are eating, walk. Walk. You think I don't know how that thing works? be fooled by what you see 
There is a testimony of the transition of faith. See that? I was sharing with a lady that once upon a time, I used to buy bread and cut it and put granite. There's a way you arrange it so that with every bite, you know, the whole surface area is covered. You push it in. You are not the first to do it. So all that insult, you've been insulting God. You said, look, there are people who did not even have the bread. Right? And God brought them out of it. So he will, he will bring you up. We just sang that our status is changing. But it starts as I walk through the land of promise. Everybody say the word of God is my land of promise. Say one more time, the word of God. I know tonight's teaching is very simple, but don't trivialize the power of it. The word of God is my land of promise. Ha! So I study, brothers and sisters. See, as I'm, I, I feel like just sitting down to start studying the Bible. As I'm just talking to you now. A weak person, a non-entity, nobody knows you. But when you walk through that land of promise, you are already engaging something. You may not understand. There's, I'm not denying the, look, I'm not denying the fact that you are in pain. Don't get me wrong. Faith does not deny what is happening. You see that? Aha. Uh -huh. So if I'm sick and I say, I have headache, it's not negative confession. No. Please. If you want to say you are well, say you are well. But if I'm sick and I tell you something is, is pinching me here, it's not lack of faith. Are you getting my point? Many of us have felt so guilty. We don't even know when you are serious, when you are saying the real thing or not. You say, bros, can we get 20 naira? I say, I'm rich. You say, no, no, no. The issue is, you know, if you don't want to say, okay, there's nothing exactly in the pocket. Please, don't feel embarrassed. Don't make it look like the word of God makes you a fool. Are you getting what I'm saying? You don't just speak anyhow and then things change. Speaking is a law. The Bible says a curse causeless shall not stand. Are you getting what I'm saying? So don't just say if I speak anyhow, whether I believe it or not, something happens. Be wise. That's why we are growing. Praise God. Study. So I walk through this thing. Look, let me tell you how I study. Let me show you how I study. I don't study foolishly. I study strategically. Everybody say strategically. My goal of studying the Bible is not to crime scriptures. There are real needs on ground. Criming does very little in helping you produce results. I hope you are aware. You can cram Genesis to Revelation. The part you truly act out in faith is the part that works for you. Is that true? So I write different aspects of my life that I want to see the glory of God revealed. I write ministry. I write my finances. Are you following me now? Different aspects. And I begin to walk through the garden of the Lord. My promised land. Finding out what God's idea what are his promises what is his what does his word have to tell me about this how far can I be anointed to what limit the problem is you see the reason why the devil kills your word study life right see when the devil wants to destroy you there are three things he just attacks it's very easy number one he kills your word life Number two, he kills your prayer life. Number three, he kills your corporate fellowship life. When these three are dead, you are finished. It's as simple as that. Just three things. You want to go and study and all of a sudden that lukewarmness. Notice, ladies, you've read novels that are two times larger than this. But to read just three or four pages that's to tell you there is a devil that does not want you to see something are you getting my point i can give you a storybook and you can read many of you have gone to the library you have gone to different things there are many people who in your place of work you are given tasks that require you reading voluminous books and you do all of that within a week but how come when it comes to studying this you thought it's because the letters are small. You brought you bought large letter edition. It's still is big. There is a there is a spirit. Hallelujah. Everybody says study. It starts there. Let me not deceive you, brothers and sisters. Faith is not cheap. 
If you understand this, you will respect everyone who walks by faith. Through Bible faith starts the encounter of the word. When you study, you find the promises. When you find the promises, the next thing is meditation. Everybody say meditation. It's still part of getting to the point of revelation. I'm trying to break down how faith truly works. Say meditation. What is meditation? The word meditation is as, as, not just to, to speak aloud. The word meditation is the process that makes a revelation become your own. You see that? Okay, now you are studying. He told Peter, for instance, cast your net to the right side. How does that story relate to your situation in Zaria? Meditation. Meditation begins to draw out the spirit of that word. It begins to personalize it. It's in the place of meditation that some of us even have encounters. Real encounters. While you are meditating under a heavy unction, you can sleep and then you have a dream. In that dream, you can have encounters. Some of you can see men of God. Some of you can see people. And that thing crystallizes your conviction. You get up and hold that scripture and say, I caught this. See that? When, when there is meditation, the end of it is conviction. The whole goal of revelation is to bring you to a point of conviction. Another word is persuasion. I'm showing you how Bible faith starts. Persuasion. Persuasion. If you are not persuaded, you cannot finish the equation. Because you will doubt on the way. So you must strengthen your persuasion before the journey begins. Hallelujah. You don't believe in tithing. You just did it because your pastor laughs at you and says, Look, you have not been paying tight. I'm, I'm watching those who are standing. I'm working in the same office with you. It's, it's me that pays your salary. Eh? And, and you get angry. And you get afraid. And so just to please your pastor, you just squeeze your envelope and frown and stand. And you lift it up, let him see you. Oh, I'm dropping it now. You won't be blessed that way. That's mechanical. I never do things until I have the revelation for them. It's painful to do a thing without having the revelation. You'll be trying to copy others. And after wasting your time, you won't get their results. Don't be hasty in doing anything. Get a revelation. Hallelujah. Do you spend time meditating? Let me tell you, one of the greatest key to meditation is silence. Many of us are too noisy for the word of God to become alive in us. Is God speaking to us? There are times in the night, late in the night, I just carry a chair and I go outside and I just sit down. No noise. All the noisemakers are asleep. And I just sit down. And I'm just praying in tongues. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Sometimes I could just carry. Worship is not noise. You can have that faint atmosphere of worship. And you're just sitting down. All of a sudden, a scripture like an arrow will fire into your spirit. When you share it with somebody, you'll be disappointed that they don't jump at it the way you jump. Because it's a revelation to you. Have you ever shared a scripture with somebody and said, my goodness, my brother, you are slapping your head while you are talking. Say, ah, is it not last week's coin? And you live there so sad and disappointed. Don't be disappointed. They are life to those who find them. To those who find them. It has become your revelation. Now you are ready to move to the next level. Are we following now? So the equation starts with what? Number one is revelation. And under revelation, it takes study and meditation. When a revelation has truly entered your spirit, it will bring conviction. Listen, I've said it again and again and let me repeat it. Revelation is not knowing what God has said. That's study. Revelation is knowing what it takes to make it work in your life. Hmm. Number two, the second dimension the moment conviction and persuasion is there, you believe it. That's where many of us stop. But that's not all there is. Let me shock you. The next 
dimension to the equation of faith is prayer. And I'll tell you why. It's not just acting. It's prayer. Listen to me. I'm telling you what works. Prayer. When you catch a revelation, the next thing is not to run. You will miss something major. This is where a lot of people miss it. Are you getting it now? When you catch a revelation, brothers and sisters, the next dimension is prayer. An investment praying in tongues. I beg you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you are not filled with the Holy Ghost with evidence of praying in tongues, real fluent spiritual tongues given by the Holy Ghost, contend for it. We are more than ready to minister to you here. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost has settled this issue of tongues or no tongues in the body of Christ. You are the only one who has not had the revelation. It's a done deal. It's a settled thing. The advantages of praying in the spirit is, is beyond any denominational barrier or whatever it is. What does prayer do to you? Two things. Prayer reveals the strategy. Kabbalah katabalataya. Hmm. It's not enough to know what God wants to do. There is always what you must do to commit God. Prayer is where you get the strategy. Hear me. It is not every place in scripture where the condition is verbatim. There are some situations that are customized to you. Let me give you an instance. You now read how Jesus healed blind Bartimaeus, right? Or how God opened the womb of Anna. I'm a, okay, well, I'm not a woman. I wanted to use an example of Praise the Lord. Now, but imagine that there is a woman who is buried, unable to take in, and now she begins to meditate, seeing the ministry of fruitfulness all in the Bible, all the scriptures that God has placed for fruitfulness, and all the barren women in the Bible who God opened their womb. She's studying, and in it, she begins to find spiritual keys. Are you getting my point? What they did, it does not mean you just, you can stand up, your situation may not afford you the opportunity to do exactly what they did. For instance, some people left to Jericho. Where is your own Jericho? That you, are you getting me? It is in the place of prayer. The Holy Ghost gives you your customized strategy. Are you getting my point? Two things happen in prayer. We are, we are a praying ministry. See, you must be a man of prayer to appreciate what I'm saying. If you don't pray, it won't make sense to you. As you begin to pray, the strategy comes. You can't obey until the instruction comes. Are you getting my point? Strategy. So I begin to pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, a crowd is packing full here. How are we going to get another venue? And I'm praying, humanly speaking, there may not be another venue. Lord, we thank you. What are you saying? And I begin to study the wilderness ministry of Jesus. How did they manage the crowds? What did they do? But we are not in the wilderness. So I need a rema. Are you getting my point? Prayer is what brings the spirit of the revelation. And then you will hear a word for you. Sometimes you can be praying. It is in the place of prayer that you get the customized revelation. And then two things happen. Number one, I told you, you get the strategy or the instruction. The second thing is you receive the grace supplied for obedience. You can never obey God until grace is given to you. Because some of the instructions that you will get from the place of prayer will be too hard. Some of the instructions may be empty your account. Some of the instructions may be pray all through the night. Is someone getting what I'm saying? Some of the instructions may be make sure you come and buy water here for three weeks. All kinds of instructions. That's why he not only gives you strategy, he releases the grace. Many people try to obey without the grace. This is the two-part dimension of grace that I want to explain to you. There is the dimension of grace that brings you into the finished work of Christ. And there is the dimension of grace supplied to you to obey, to actualize it. Right? It has been paid for, but you need grace to ensure its delivery. Someone's situation is changing. So you see that you prayed, you believed it. Oh, a job is coming. I found that revelation. 
where Jesus, the, the master, told them, he said, why sittest thou idle? You see, you have to search. Lord, I'm jobless. Uncle, give me a job. You will, you will be frustrated forever. All those uncle and did thing. Many of us have never paid attention to this other option. You just hear it. But why don't you go back to the word of God? Lord, I don't have a job. Holy Spirit, guide me. And all of a sudden, the Spirit of God, who, who searches the mind of God, begins to reveal to you. And you find that parable, for instance. You find the parable where Jesus was sending people into the vineyard. Is that true? And he met some people and said, Why sittest thou idle? Is that not a scripture now that relates to your situation? True study. There are Bible concordances. There are Greek and Hebrew Bibles. There is Bible Gateway. There are many Bible softwares that ease your search. Huh? Scriptures on joblessness. Google. Enter. And scriptures come out. No, no, no. Look, don't laugh. Except you don't want a job. And you bring them out. Some may make sense. Some may not make sense. Just scan them. And you find you don't need plenty. It may just be one. And now you are getting that scripture. Watch this. When you get that scripture, you meditate. Lord, open my eyes. What made the master to call them? Was there anything on their part that they did? Is there something in between the line in this story that my eyes has not seen? Hallelujah. And you get it so God is able. You see, the might, the revelation of the might of God begins to down on you. If God gave these people jobs and he paid them salary, it means I can get a job and they will pay me salary. And you begin to pray. The moment you begin to pray, don't just get up and act and say, yes, I've caught it, application. I hereby write for a job in this company. You must give me. What grace is sponsoring that, 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 that religiosity? That's religion. That's why you open the office and they'll say, what are you saying? You say, I want a job. They say, walk out of here. Do you think? And you, and you now live disappointed. You went with a lot of zeal. God is good. He has done me well. And, and now you are there and, and you are disappointed because you did not finish the equation of faith. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The next thing you would have done is to take that revelation to the place of prayer. The threshing floor. Where your customized, unique instruction is given. Somebody's breakthrough is already happening to him. Because God is showing you the missing link. It will work. And then I begin to pray. This is how I do with koinonia messages. I play the messages. And while the messages are playing, because there are some things that I said by the Holy Ghost, the man of God is preaching and Joshua Selman is listening to him. And while he's preaching and praying, and I just hear something. Once you hear it, you are ready to act. Because the moment an instruction comes, that instruction can still refer you back to the Bible. Right? It doesn't just mean that you see an angel with wings. You can hear it and then an instruction will come. You can be praying and say, Lord, change my situation. As I go for koinonia, change my situation. And while you are praying, Lord, I believe you will change my life tonight. And while you are praying, a scripture just come. Jesus told the lepers, go and show yourself to the priest. You see that? That's a revelation that would have not made sense in a normal day. But to you, it is God's remnant to you. And the Bible says, as they went. What, what does that mean? It means you should stand up and go. See that? And as you go, you commit the integrity of God to perform. So prayer reveals the strategy and it also supplies grace. Because there are some instructions, especially financial instructions. Some of you, you, have not, you are not givers. That's why it, 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 you don't get... There are some people here who are reckless givers. If you are a true giver, you know that you need grace. It's called giving grace. Because you are crying and saying, Lord, change my situation. Lord, I leave this 10,000. Something must happen. I don't have an uncle. I don't have an auntie. My father is dead. My mother is dead. I don't have anybody. I didn't have the opportunity to go to school. You are the only one I have. And Lord, if you do not help me, I have seen in the word of God that these are the situations. And God says, take now thy Isaac, that son. Are you a fool? 
you are about to go and use that money and at least even buy a Bible with it. And God says, I know it's a Bible you want to buy. Forward match. Sometimes God can tell you to go and sow it into the life of somebody you don't love. You can't pretend you didn't hear it. See that? But in that instruction, you are now ready to obey. That's the last final phase of the equation of faith. Prompt and complete obedience. Please write. Number one is revelation. Number two is prayer. Number three is prompt and complete obedience. Having all readiness to judge every disobedience when your obedience is complete. Prompt and complete obedience. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. Please let's hurry up. Let me tell you something brothers and sisters. This is the hardest part of the equation of faith. Settling down to study is not the hard part. This is the labor dimension of faith. Are you getting me? This is where you labor in the spirit. It says, if ye be what? And not willing and desirous. Not willing and hungry. If ye be willing, revelation makes you willing. But obedience, the hardest part, this is the link, brothers and sisters, this is the consummation of the faith equation. No matter what else you do that you call faith, if you do not obey, it is not called faith. Hallelujah. Confession, sowing of seeds, only become potent when we are willing to obey. When we are willing to obey. Everybody say obedience. I have found out that this is the link between where you are and where you need to go. Brothers and sisters, obedience is not child's play. Obedience is hard work. That's why you must receive the grace in the place of prayer. Lord, I know you are about to speak and I cannot pretend that I'm not hearing you. So grant me the grace. That when the instructions come, may they not be too heavy. Yes. 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 That's all I'll say to him. Yes. 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 I'll say yes. That's your link to the next level. Yes. When you hear that instruction, it means your season is about to change. Are willing to obey no power in existence can stop you from going to the next level i give you a, a guarantee listen your obedience is what judges the devil obedience obedience oh i feel the anointing of the spirit i'll hurry up so that we we'll pray brothers and sisters obedience obedience we are going to look at one case study and then we'll support you with a few. Isaiah 51, please, quickly. One and two. Let's hurry up. Isaiah 51. Let's look at a man who from the Bible is called the epitome of faith. Isaiah 51. Hallelujah. Verse 2. Everyone read. It says, look unto Abraham, your father, and to Sarah that bear you. For I called him alone and blessed him and I increased him. That means God is giving you a case study. He's saying now that you know what faith is. Look at a biblical portrait. Understudy his life. And you will find therein the keys. So let's study Abraham. Genesis 22. Quickly please. Our first case study. 
is Abraham. How did God turn an idol worshiper, a mediocre in a small land called the awe of the Chaldeans? How did he become so prosperous? How did he become the father of faith? Hallelujah. Verse 2. It says, and he said, watch this. Okay, let's go to 12, verse 1 and 2, then we'll come back to 22. Genesis 12 from verse 1 and 2. The Bible, do you know that the person who was supposed to carry this, this fatherly mantle was his father, Terah? It was not Abraham. Terah missed it through disobedience. And the Bible says, Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of what? Are you seeing now? So we see that an instruction came. What was the instruction? Get out. Don't ask questions. Just move. He says, get thee out of thy country from thy kindred father's house unto a land that I will show you. He said, if you do this, here's the result. I will make of thee. Many times we caught the part of the scripture and just start claiming, I will. no, there was an instruction. Faith is a response to an instruction. And I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. Next verse. Verse 3 now. Help us media. In Jesus name. Please walk together. We have to really rush. Okay, no problem. And then he finished all the blessings. I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that cursed thee and in thee shall the families of the earth be blessed. When will that happen? When will that happen? What was the first instruction? Get out. Abraham would have remained there and he would have died an idol worshiper at the all, at all of the Chaldeans. He got up and began to move. Go to verse 13. Chapter 13, sorry. Chapter 13, not. Chapter 13 from verse 1. And Abraham went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and Lot went with him into the south. Abraham took a step and he started moving. Lord said, I'm going with you. For joining in the obedience alone, the man became blessed. Are you getting me now? Lot was not part of the covenant. Like Ruth held on to who? Naomi. She was not supposed to be part of the lineage. She said, no way. I'm not going anywhere. Oh, prophet, thank you. I'm, I'm leaving. Ruth said, no way. Your obedience is my... Whatever you do, I will do. 22 verse 1. Here was a test. The instruction was going to come for that promise to become real. At this point, Abraham had begun to experience some some kinds of things liftings and all of that and it came to pass after these things that god did tempt the word tempt there is test abraham and said unto him abraham and he said behold here i am verse two and he said what take your son we are understanding abraham abraham did not just carry isaac he would have slaughtered his son for nothing with no blessing attached you move as instructed not as you wish Either instructed by the voice of the spirit or the principles of the word. is still the same. We have been taking steps out of our wishes and not out of the voice of God. It says, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a bond offering upon one of the mountains, which I will show you. Verse 3, may that be your testimony. Read the first line. And Abraham rose up early in the morning. Everybody say prompt obedience. Delayed disobedience. Delayed obedience is disobedience in a measure. When God speaks to you, stand up. The moment you sit down there, that grace gets exhausted. And you find out you no longer can stand up. God told you to sow the seed. At that point, because it was in the place of prayer, you could do it. He said, wait, later on. When you came, you now calculated how much? 120. Hi! What did I hear like this? In the morning, you even said it's even 200 I will give. But something has happened. See that? Or go and lay your hands on the woman in Shika. 
and you say in the name of Jesus I'm going I know that they are used to seeing me just as a brother but I'm going as instructed and later on you just say let me quickly just go and greet uh, Benga and see whether he has prepared lunch after the lunch and everything you get up and your mind starts telling you yourself they have already called you stupid even before you behave stupid now by the time you go to the hospital what if they drive you what if something happens to the car I say oh lord i'll just intercede after all it's, it will soon be time for prayers you see what the the beauty of grace is you take advantage of it immediately the grace for obedience must be maximized promptly he rose up early there is a reason why the bible tells us that remember we're understanding abraham he rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and so on and so on and so forth uh let's go to verse 5 verse 5 okay verse 7 he said and Isaac spoke unto Abraham his father and said my father and he said here I am he said behold the fire and the wood but where is the lamb the son didn't know he was the lamb next verse please let's hurry up and Abraham said my God shall provide a lamb for his bond offering so they went up together verse 9 and they came to a place which God had done this and that and that. And he bound Isaac. Verse 10. And Abraham stretched forth. Makalabo kataya. His obedience was about to be complete. Do you know if he did not leave that knife. Everything he has done is multiplied by zero. It's painful when you start your obedience and stop. You've paid too much price. Why don't you finish it? And, and commit God's integrity. Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Verse 11. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, lay not thy hand on the lad, neither do thou anything to him. He said, for now. See that? For when? Not when you left your house. Not when you were at the base of the mountain. For now. I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son. In other words, you obeyed me even unto death. The blessing follows 13 and abraham lifted his eyes and looked and beheld a ram caught by the thorns and abraham went and took the ram and offered it at a bond offering instead of his son 14 and abraham called the name of that place jehovah jireh are you seeing that now jehovah jireh you are singing it jehovah jireh uh -uh. don't just sing what did he do that made that a revelation my God shall supply all my needs true according to his riches in glory but according to your obedience to the instructions that will bring that riches 15 and the angel of the Lord called out of Abraham called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said by myself come on now this is god stepping in when your equation is complete satan was not mentioned here it was a deal between god and he said by myself i have sworn because thou hast done done not said not confess oh i will kill isaac in the name of jesus isaac you are dead in fact it's not that you are dying you are dead it's nonsense if there is no obedience he said and has not withheld thy son 17 he said that in blessing i will bless you and in multiplying i will multiply you as the as, as thy seed as the stars of heaven and as the sun which is upon the seashore and thy seed shall what possess the gates of thy enemy please i want you to make up your mind beginning from today that obedience will become the watchword of your life this is Bible faith. Obedience. In Joshua chapter 6, just write it. I will not need to go there. The walls of Jericho. I want to show you. In fact, when you go to Hebrews 11, the Bible begins to give us the archives of men who did exploit with what we know called faith. And you find out that for all of them, there may be variations here and there. But one common thing is that they all took steps when a word came steps jericho in joshua chapter one the lord began to speak to joshua he said as i was with my servant moses so i will be with you right he said only 
don't be afraid, be courageous, and so on and so forth. And, and you know, he looked at all of them. Now, watch this. God had told him he had given him Jericho. But if they just went, do you know they would have killed them? Please, learn this. Never obey. Just try to obey without prayer. Involve God. You will get the unique instructions. That's where the power lies in the word, in the instruction. Hallelujah. When Joshua went to pray in the night, what happened? The strategy was revealed to him. So on one side, you will take Jericho, but there is a strategy. It's a strategy that was never used in the Bible for anything again. It came as a rema. And he told him, he said, walk around. That's the strategy. You walk around today and it may not walk until it is a rema. But he walked around seven times, right? And on the seventh day, he went seven times and he said, now, Tehila, let there be a shout. That was a strategy. Other times, he told Jehoshaphat, he said, put the worshippers in front and let them begin to sing and say you are good and your mercies endure forever. That's the strategy. For you, your strategy may be come for counseling. God can tell you there is an anointing you will receive and it will change your life. Write your name for counseling. Even if there is nothing, just come. That's a strategy. For someone else, the Lord will say, go on a three-day fast. In the three-day fast, I will speak to you and you will catch a light. Are you getting what I'm saying? So you see that many of the things we call faith is not faith. It's not faith. It's just metaphysics. The widow in Zarephath, 1 Kings 17 from verse 7 to 16. Just write it, will not turn there for time's sake. Remember what happened. God commanded Elijah to go to Zarephath. There he will meet a widow. And watch this. He came and he met a woman in a state of lack and insufficiency. She needed to put her faith to work. But she could not put her faith to work until a word would come. And the prophet said, bring me water. The woman would have said, water for what? Water for what? And she took the water and as she was bringing it, he said, also bring me a morsel of bread. And she said, honestly, sir, this instruction is so much. He said, just do this. And the Bible says when she obeyed, her faith was released and she saw the supply. Are you seeing in scripture that all through the hallmark of faith is obedience? In my opinion, there is one word for faith, obedience. That's it. One word, obedience. If you do not obey the word, forget about the manifestation. When we're about to start Koinonia, I went to the Lord because the Lord had shown me in a vision. But where I saw in a vision, I could not relate with any physical place. And then I was, my mind had a lot of options here and there. But I went to the Lord. I said, Lord, I know that you are able to do this. All I need is a strategy. And I was praying, praying in the spirit, just lying down and worshiping. And all of a sudden, I had CGC. The Lord spoke to me. And I said, Lord, I don't even know the people here. How are we going to get access to the place? And the Lord told me, I've gone before you. You see, you don't need to do anything. Just stay there. The word has come. And see where we are today. The product of faith. It will work any day. It will work any time. One time I was praying and I said, Lord, how do we do now? There are sick people and your people need to be equipped. And the Lord said, turn the last Friday of every month to become a special time to minister to the people. When the counseling was getting too much, every day I said, Lord, what is, what is this strategy? And first we had moved to Saturday. And then the Lord helped us to arrive. Who does counseling on Monday by 11 o'clock? Does that make sense to you? But that's what God said. Look, brothers and sisters, if he speaks, start moving. Let your mind understand later on. Are you getting what I'm saying? Look at Jesus. I love Jesus. Jesus looks at a man who is blind. Sir, I am blind. And then Jesus makes mud, right? Puts in his eyes and says, go and wash. Go and wash. Go and wash. I'm blind. If I could see, would I come to you? They let me. He didn't say, neighbors, take him to go and wash. He said, find your way there. Same thing Elisha told Naaman. Go and bath. See? You can choose to be arrogant about it 
or you can humble yourself and enter that water seven times and change your story now man said but then all rivers they, they, the servant said i'm walking with you soon i will leave you please you better be healed so that this thing will be better for us you are a liability to me this and that and that go and bath and he went watch this he went and started obeying but nothing happened till his obedience was complete six times he would have gotten up and just gone with mud like a fool a man who brought victory right he would have just moved and say ah captain where are you from he said what one stupid prophet gave me an instruction after six times i said come on my pride will not allow me many of you started obeying one step to see the hand of god the devil brought you back and look nothing happened one step some of you came for miracle service for instance and we said in the name of jesus you shout that name jesus and you just stood and said i beg there is. people were just shouting like fools and you were there and said, ah, everybody was getting blessed getting healed instructions instructions the secret of true faith when you get that word obey the truth is we have not been obedient enough and this is why we've not been seeing it. Look at the feeding of the 5,000. Jesus took the bread, blessed it, and did what? The bread did not multiply in the hands of Jesus. Did it? No, sir. He gave them. He said, go and start sharing. Go and start sharing. Look at the 10 lepers. He told them, he said, go and show yourself to the priest. And they went at that word. The Bible said, as they went. Not before, as they went. He says, this sign shall follow, not go before. You have to take steps. A miracle always comes, or the miracle always comes, after the instruction or condition is met. Never forget this. The miracle always comes after the instruction has been obeyed. Fully. Yes to your will, Lord. Yes to your ways. Oh, oh, yes, Lord. I will obey. Yes to your will, Lord. Yes to your ways. Therefore, is defined as the action you take. Right, we are concluding. Faith is defined as the action you take based on your conviction of God's word and in line with the instructions required by God. Right. Faith is the action you take not the desire to act the very action you take based on your conviction of god's word and in line with the conditions or instructions required by god if you do that you have manifested what the bible calls bible faith otherwise you will just be playing games and talking games I told the Lord, whatever you demand of me, I will do. I was in Abuja and um, one of my very nice shoes that I love, I was polishing the thing to package it and the Lord told me, this shoe goes for so, so, so person. Someone sowed a very major seed into my life and as soon as I received it, God said, now you are an usher, pass it to so, so, so person. Years ago, I would have cried, but I've grown. Mm. Because every time his instruction comes, that's my status changing. That's it changing. Hallelujah. Last year, when we were starting Koinonia, the Lord said we should carry all the seed in the house and sow everything. Everything. The whole money. I told the finance department, I said the Lord has given an instruction, pack everything. If God has told you you will marry a man of God, start praying for grace. Don't just say when. Pray for grace. 
because you are, the man himself is, is enough to be a ministry for you a true man of God is strange right you wake up and see a man roaming like a zombie in your room speak Lord I'm listening honey what's going on I'm okay it's alright and you are wondering whether you are the one who is going as a sacrifice or not listen you will never receive breakthrough beyond the level of your last obedience never 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 don't reject the instructions of God every time you search the Bible look for conditions not just promises alone what are the conditions tied to them hallelujah I sowed that seed and in less than two hours more than 1,000% of that seed came into my life. Hallelujah. Crazy instructions that God has given me. Crazy instructions. I remember when I traveled to Canaan land as the instruction of the Lord. I went with a seed and I went there when I was done outside in the public, not in one small corner. The Lord told me, go on your knees on that ground. And I went down there. I've shared the story. You know about it. I've shared with you how the Lord instructed me to give everything. Everything. Hallelujah. I carried my Isaac. Dragged it into the church. And came and placed it on the altar like a fool. Don't want any man's glory until you can obey the instructions he obeyed. What you need to pray for is Lord grace there was a time the Lord instructed me I locked myself for three days non-stop my eyes did not see the sun did not see the sun because the Lord said so no sun no food no nothing the only thing that I did was to take my bath and that was because the bathroom was inside the room where I stayed no nothing are you willing to obey if ye be willing and obedient you will eat the good of the land hallelujah i told you about how i trekked from the roundabout in pz right at the instruction of the lord the roundabout in pz i trekked to aviation praying in tongues i take this city the keys of this city is given unto me don't you sit down and see people coming and think it's just because I'm a young man. It's not charm. When you obey him, his integrity is committed. Who is God speaking to tonight? Stop grumbling and complaining. Cry and say, Lord, what is the word for the next level? Because if he gives you that word, you will rise to that. Hallelujah. I remember someone who one time, his father was sick. And he played an instrument for from night the lord gave him an instruction to play an instrument from about 10 till about 6 in the morning he said just play that instrument non-stop and that guy was worshiping by the morning the father was healed look at me the arm of the lord is not too short koinonia are you hearing me there are pastors there are people we like miracles but we hate instructions we hate instructions my life moves at the pace of the instructions of the Lord instructions of the Lord I think it was yesterday or day before yesterday I saw one suit that I like new suit they just showed it to me and the Lord showed me the face of someone in protocol ah I said oh God this is going I called him immediately I said where are you I said come quickly this is for you and he came and I gave you was surprised I said bye bye before any unbelief will enter and I'll collect my team back go I love you, Jesus. That was from the Spirit. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Oh, it takes faith to move mountains, brothers and sisters. I love you, Jesus. There is no instruction I will not obey. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Listen. It 
says through faith they subdued kingdoms they wrought righteousness they shut the mouths of lions he said what more can i say for time will fail me to speak to you about gideon and barak and jephthah ordinary men who obey god to the latter sister when you obey god that man must come it doesn't matter where he is forget about witches and wizards concentrate on your obedience concentrate there are some of you god told you drag your family members and bring them here the word came with the grace for it to happen you say master we have toiled all night There are times God can use a man to speak to you. They tell you, go and listen to relationship and family life. I have listened to it before. No, no. Remember, you are responding to a word. Don't forget. He may tell you to do what you have always done. But this time around, there is an anointing upon it. You will do it and see very seemingly crazy instructions. God can tell you, just sit down on these drums. And just be playing and clashing the cymbal and praying. It. Don't do it do it if you are ashamed of men forget about greatness you will never carry certain levels of the anointing i went for six hours in just standing at the renhard bunker crusade because i was desperate and and i set my gaze on that man because there was something i wanted to land on me i was not sitting down asking stupid questions that people ask when they go to places ah this man this white man why is he wasting our time is there rema or no rema? That was not my, I was at my, my, my face was set like a flint. Brothers and sisters, listen. Wait, the financial prosperity series I'm about to preach, I truly believe it will cause a revolution. There are new things that the Lord has shown me that I put my hand on my head. I say, my goodness, Joshua Selman, where have you been? Your life must change when in the season of the rain. Obedience is the platform. Don't blame anybody. Take responsibility. There are only three prayer points tonight we are going to pray. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray. Sorry about the time. We are really working on beating the time. But I want you to pray. Begin to thank God for the word tonight. Begin to thank him for the word tonight. It's time for new levels of grace. New fountains. New levels of impact. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to pray. Prayer point number one. Lord, help me and give me a receptive spirit to hear your instructions and to see your conditions as demanded by scripture. Lift your voice. Please pray seriously. This is the time to pray and not walk around inside and outside. Let our spirits be opened, O oh God. That as we study, may we see instructions. May we not just see promises, but conditions. Your level is changing, I tell you. Your level is changing, I tell you. God is not a man that you should lie. He's not the son of man that you should repent. Lord, I receive a receptive spirit. I receive a receptive spirit. I receive a receptive spirit. I'm receptive to your instruction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. There are conditions tied to you walking in divine health. 
There are conditions tied to influence and increase and honor. There are conditions tied to prosperity. There are conditions tied to longevity. Find out. We have preached these things. Our messages are full of these keys. Prayer point number two. Lord Jesus, speak to me. Speak to me. I'm ready to obey. Speak to me. Let your word supply grace. Reveal the strategy. Pray. Show me the key to the next level of breakthrough, to the next level of influence, to the next level of encounter, to the next level of the anointing. Through vision, through the written word, through prophetic direction, instructions will come in messages as you walk. Hallelujah. 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 Prayer point number three. I want you to pray this with all your heart. Cry for a fresh supply of grace for prompt and complete obedience. Some of you, God has given you instructions. There are seeds to sow. There are places to go. There are tapes to listen to. There are encounters. There are retreats to have. You have not obeyed, so you will never see his glory. Lift your voice and cry. I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive Hallelujah. Watch this. It is after you obey that you can now begin to confess. And then you can now sow a seed and tie a seed to it. Except if the sowing of the seed is the instruction. Or that if I'm believing God say for a house and I find out God gives me an instruction. Go and get an architectural design and see the kind of house you want. That's an instruction. Don't sit down and start giving foolish arguments. Now I go and I say, Lord, I found what I wanted. God will say, go and estimate. How much will it cost? Now you, co you estimate and you say it will cost 15 million. <laughs> you are sitting down. All you have home and abroad is 500 naira. Forget about it. And look, the blessing is in the instruction. It's not in what you have. Whether, you, you, whether it is 1,000 or 1 billion, it is still faith that will bring it. Hallelujah. And now you begin to pray. And while you pray, God will say, relax. He said, don't worry. Just relax. It will come as a seed. You have heard the word. You stand still. And you begin to prophesy. Or God will say, now go and sow a seed for it. Or you want to get married, for instance. And, and, and you are praying and you are thanking God. You are saying, Lord, thank you for this. And then you find out God gives you an instruction in the place of prayer. Maybe go and wash the plate. Go to one woman who is already married. He may even be your friend. 
He said, just go on a Saturday and help them sweep and wash their plate. That's the instruction. If you are too ashamed to do it, forget about marriage. It may be crazy, but go and do it. After you have done that, then you can now begin to prophesy. And you can now connect with a seed. And say, Lord, I sow a seed into this. And I speak. My marriage is coming. The man that God is bringing, like our sister said, is a blessed man. He's a godly man. Your obedience is complete. Something is wrong with your family. Your husband or your wife is misbehaving. And all of that. You don't sit down and say, me and you will enter the same trouser. What has entering the same trouser got to do with, with the solution? You don't need to enter the same trouser. You need a word from God. All these stupid cultural things that we put, we must enter the same trouser. And do what? Is it going to solve the problem? Get a word from God. Where you are confused, come for counseling. This is the situation. What do you think what is, the, what is the scriptural mystery? What is the principle that is responsible for the delivery of this? Right? That's why we pray. That's why we come here all the time. We are dispensing mysteries. As these mysteries are dispensed, it's falling on different people. You catch it and you walk with it. It has changed the lives of people from nothing. It has taken people to wherever they will go. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Very fearful and touching testimony. A gentleman listened to my message. He's been following my teachings and he's been listening to my messages. And they are trusting God. He's a real estate person. He's trusting God for breakthroughs and all of that. And then a miracle just happened to him. Within a short time, they gave him 60 hectares of land to develop and sell. His profit from that is 300 million. He's a young man like me. The word. As if that will finish, when I, when I got to Abuja, he made sure, every time I go to Abuja, he makes sure he's the one driving me around. He said, I must drive you. The last time I went, he said they gave him another 40 hectares, making 100 hectares. What is it that God cannot do? Your obedience. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your obedience. Your obedience. Your obedience. I hear a lot of testimonies. Testimonies. You were, I think many of us have, have we've heard about the testimony of the woman who for eight years was barren. Selena's auntie or so. And this woman supernaturally, by acting the word of God, had triplets. They are all alive today. Triplets to recover for the eight years. What is it that God cannot? Don't come, we say write prayer requests. It's when you are here that you just scrabble in what is even your own. You are just playing games with God. That's why very few people get testimonies. Change your attitude from today. Let it not be Friday by five. You say it's time for koinonia. Be intentional about it. There are people who come in for miracle service. We all fast on Thursdays. But on Friday, they, they prepare when I'm coming for koinonia, it's as if, do you know, you see me sit down sometimes here. My body is shaking. I'm just waiting for worship to finish. Testimonies, when people are shouting, you see, there's answer. I want to just dispense what God has brought. But there are people who just sit down. You bring a teaspoon and you want, you want to have an ocean of blessings. Enlarge your capacity. It says, the labor of the foolish, where yet how many? It didn't say, where is one from the group? Every one of them. Why? Because he knoweth not how to go to the city. He didn't say there is no road. He knoweth not. 60 verse 1 of Isaiah says, Arise, shine. Amplified says, Arise from the frustration and the prostration that situations and circumstances have kept you. He says, Rise to a new light. Arise shine why for your light is come not that your light is available it's always been there but the day it comes to you it has capacity to cause you to arise please hear me believers god is not a charmer he's not a magician there is always an engaging of the systems of god fear is a product of ignorance or inaccurate understanding of the systems of god the antidote to fear is not just casting the spirit away. There is the spirit of fear. But there, is, there are activities that result to fear naturally. 
an understanding of the systems of God. So this is what we desire. But do we know? Do you know, for instance, believers, that in the economy of God with men, there is a way that men can receive bad things that leave them. We call it restoration. We all know and we all agree that restoration is a possibility in God's dealings with man. But do you understand the system? There is an exact spiritual system that produces that outcome. Are we together now? Yes. There is a system scattered in scripture that distinguishes men and lifts them up. Listen, let me tell you something. The word of God is only profitable when we understand our roles in making the outcome happen. The word of God is only profitable when we understand our roles. The summation of what the Bible calls faith is first understanding. This is where the challenge is. Our understanding being faulty, being incomplete, being unfruitful. So it is incapable of delivering the results that we expect. And therein lies the power of darkness. Leveraging on our inaccurate understanding of the systems of God. And then we mock God. There are people who have come with several situations tonight. And within seconds, we've not been away for over a week. I mean, it's, it's been a tour right from the west down to the south and here. And it's been an amazing time. Watching all the miracles and the things that have happened. You know, I have wondered. Wondered. Just like those who receive, I have wondered at how easy it is to get God's hand. Having the readiness to judge all disobedience if and only when our obedience is complete. Ignorance truly empowers Satan. In fact, there is a class of the demonic care that called rulers of darkness. Their dominion is activated whenever there is no light. We must contend for accurate understanding there is no one in school to sponsor me i am alone so you say but there is a provision in the dealings of god with men where he can raise strangers he said it strangers will feed your flock keep the promise but find out the system that commits god to making it an epistle in your life here and now otherwise we will continue to mock ourselves again and again God said it, but we may never see it in our lives. Someone listening to me here, inside, outside, across the nations of the earth, will need to realize that this is the key. It's not God. It is our lack of participation to produce the outcomes that we desire. Say amen. This is the second reason why many people remain perpetually in failure and defeat let me give us something isaiah 31 is a scripture that blessed me so much and i think it will bless you verse 1 to 3 those who depend on the strength of men the strategies of men listen to what the bible says war to them that go down to egypt for help and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many it says and in horsemen because they are very strong but they look not to the holy one of israel neither seek their god let's go to verse 3 verse 3 please it says now these egyptians that you claim are so formidable they are men no are we together now it says and not god and their horses are flesh there is a limit to which they can defend you it says and not spirit when the Lord shall stretch out his hands listen both he that helpeth shall fall and he that is helped now this is an ancient language shall also fall down two of them shall do what if God does not help you and your destiny helper together so it is never from men i've taught you this all every good and perfect gift comes from above through men to you from god through men to you so your prayer is not to men the god of all flesh 
that can manipulate things according to his will from God through men to you when it becomes from men that begins the cycle of tragedy from your life anything God cannot give me let no man claim he can give me I know we say yes sir but we don't believe it it shows on our our desperation calling the attention of men you are my last hope Sam if you don't pick my call I'm dead that's a man who does not know God because he said if you will not praise me it is still within my power to raise up things that should not do that God is only limited by how much we trust him his wisdom is multifaceted has the capacity to invent new formulas of communicating your breakthrough to you your assignment is to trust him enough who is like him lion and the lamb seated on the throne mountains bow down every ocean rose to the lord of lords never never allow your appetite or your perception of the ability of men and human strategies to help you to outrun and push away the fact that you know God is faithful I know you're a businessman and I've read every business book but by and large is only a channel every good and perfect gift comes from above I know you went to school but let me tell you something if God does not speak a word on your behalf your certificate can be a piece of paper on this earth as sad as the recession is it has brought so many arrogant people to their knees men who think God is limited by their perceptions and whatever it is no God is mighty he's not scratching his head in heaven wondering what to do with believers his wisdom is so infinite it reinvents itself to manipulate answers to men regardless of the circumstances you are God alone from before time began you are on your throne you are God alone and right now time set The next time a man tells you I will not help you you are in trouble thank him don't cry go back to God and say Lord how many men did you say are on earth six billion let your wisdom your infinite wisdom that can raise up stones stones that can raise up stones to praise and glorify him I will never trust the strategy of men above God I love and know and fear him too much to be that foolish that a man comes and says look Ejimi tomorrow I'm going to change your life just because you have five billion in your account that's a joke is it not until that man wakes up from the bed in the morning listen I'm, I'm not I'm not teaching you dishonor remember I've taught you the gift of men I'm showing you the depravity the falsehood the waste of time that is committed in making men God this God is a mighty God your trust in him puts pressure on his integrity pressure on his integrity that's what brought some of you here from so far you have put pressure on his integrity I assure you he will not disappoint you hallelujah all through scripture the Bible is full of God's promises and then attached to them are conditions that men must satisfy as a proof of their faith in God God cannot assume you trust him so he creates a condition so that you're activating that condition is proof of your partnership that I agree with you it will be costly for me to take this water 
and then tell Pastor Ejimi, I want to force you to take. No, 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 no. I can't assume he's thirsty. Are we together? So I say, Ejimi, if you are thirsty, I have given you access to this. You're picking the water is proof that one you are thirsty but number two that you believe i'm not a liar now if you want to come and pick this water and the protocol stops you it you have you have obeyed you have put pressure on my own integrity and so i come in and i tell him no i instructed him he's acting based on his trust in me he's not acting based on rebellion the problem is never the devil the problem is our fear alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them number three quickly the third reason why people experience failure defeat perpetually is demonic oppressions demonic oppressions first John chapter 5 verse 19 demonic oppressions we live in a world that is full of demonic activities and the bible did not leave us in the dark as to the reality that there are forces of darkness that attempt to contend with the liberty of the saints it says and we know that we are of god read on and how many not nigeria the whole world does what lieth in wickedness like you say my child is lying on a carpet the whole world lies on a mystery of wickedness the condition to be a potential victim of this is that you are born of a woman the moment you arrive here that's all are we together now you know several people say who did I offend that all this trouble is in? all those things are they are just cultural ways of trying to manage pain the whole world lieth in wickedness the moment Jesus was born as a baby all of a sudden when a star came at the east Herod the spirit of the Antichrist began to walk in Herod and they wanted to kill Jesus even in heaven there was war he said there was war in heaven a woman I saw a mystery in heaven a woman was about to give birth to a child and a dragon came and stood waiting to eat the child and the bible says the earth fought for the woman and took the woman to a safe place hear me brothers and sisters the bible says forever O lord thy word is settled it tells you the location in it takes faith and the operation of god's word for it to be settled in your life it is settled in heaven hence the dexterity and the order in heaven but on earth there are still forces contending with the purposes of God and the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 6 please give it to us verse 12 Ephesians 6 and then verse 12 for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities listen I want you to listen to my message against spiritual intelligence that message has bled so many people. I was talking with my mother, Jimmy, today and uh, my mother almost made me cry. And she said she was listening to spiritual intelligence so much and making several decisions in her life based on that. Spiritual intelligence will teach you not to waste your time. Being angry with men, fighting men, because every man, every man is just, is a physical form being manipulated by a reality from the realm of the spirit you have to know this it is never about your in-law it is never about your son it is never about your daughter no no wasting time on men will make you hate people you cannot love there is a revelation that sponsors love so even if people speak against you you know that they are not speaking of their own Peter tried to rebuke Jesus that you will not die on the cross he said Satan get thee behind me and he said Peter Satan desired Peter said which Satan we came here together satan desired to sift you like wheat but i have prayed for you that your faith fail not and when thou art converted strengthen your brethren because he will look for them too are we together he says but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against the spiritual wickedness in heavenly places paul himself was not 
he did not leave the church in limbo as to the reality that at every point in your life there are forces that will attempt to mock God here's a revelation God gave me recently every sickness every oppression is like a letter Satan is writing to God he uses men like the canvas and says I am making a mockery of men to prove that your word is not true are we together now so when I trust God and I still come and I'm sick and the sickness is eating me it's not about you Satan does not even care he is trying to use men the highest of God's creation to make a statement to the heavens that bowing down you did not do I am now using your image to compel creation to bow down to me and so when God finds a witness men and women who represent the systems of God who represent portals that manifest the multifaceted possibilities of God in the earth they now begin to rewrite in the lives of men watch this so this lady come darling this lady has cancer it's eating her up that's a letter from satan it is never about the cancer satan does not care he's he's contented with the statement and the reaction of creation to him by reason of this are we together so when she comes for a miracle service like this god begins to rejoice not because he just became powerful finally an intercourse between need and supply listen every time hear me every time god heals a man it was not that night he planned to heal the man he had been navigating the need and the faith of that man to the grace the unction level it takes to produce that miracle and when two of them collide there must be a miracle i've taught you something listen oh let me not go ahead of myself i'm enjoying myself here very seriously listen this lady cancer now i've prayed for her and she's not healed that's a double message you see that that message now her faith begins to fail her because she's saying but but i mean does that mean my situation is different and she goes to god lord i love you i love you but then she begins to think and somebody comes to say look there's one man somewhere oh, i'm advising you all this your jesus thing me too i'm a christian i gave my life to christ before you were born i'm only telling you this what is there to all? just go and carry one goat i can't even give you half of the money you see it is a statement satan uses men their situations is like the pen he writes a letter to heaven watch the ones you claim you died for barren of your faithfulness yet you study from scripture I have been young and now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, not you see bed for bread. Then Satan comes to write a letter. That's why God is searching for men. He's not searching for men to give them titles. He's finding space in the earth through men. So that the multifaceted dimensions of his possibilities can be made manifest. Now, if this lady supernaturally gets healed, like the gentleman, look at the guy that, 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 um, that came back to life 25 people immediately 25 people because a dead body came back to life you can't deny that are we together that's a statement brothers and sisters tonight my father will write another statement yes he will yes he will see God does not just write anyhow. He writes in a way that he must force you to read it. His miracles are notable. Ask Moses. He made the bush to burn in such a way Moses could not ignore it. That's the same way somebody will walk out of this meeting and all of a sudden doors opening, 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 opening. Hallelujah. That's the God we serve. So when miracles are not just a proof that a man is anointed, that's the last reason for a miracle. Miracles are a message. It's a reply from God back to men and to the gates of hell. I am still faithful. The lion, the lamb, my benevolence is still in force. 
I am still good. My mercy endures forever. And he uses men. Sometimes you see in his wisdom, he just allows the devil to exhaust his knowledge. Then he comes in so cheaply and lifts a man and says, Satan, how about this? When you understand this, hear me. You will passionately pursue the presence and the power of God, not for fame. You are seeking to give God space. There is a statement that God needs to write to principalities and powers. They mock God in our lives. Are we together? This is what happens. Because it's difficult. Brothers and sisters, we are humans. When your life has a track record of perpetual failure, it will test your faith. And that's when Satan comes and tries to say, where is your God? You are 39 years as a lady. You have loved God all your life. No marriage. And I'm here believing my life anyhow. I'm still married, but another man still wants to add another marriage to me. Look at two of us. Brothers and sisters, they are not speaking on their own. It's a letter. So it is good to give God thanks in that situation. But it's best to give God thanks in victory. Are we together? Yeah. Thank you. Demonic forces. They exist. They are real. And they have made nonsense. First Thessalonians 2.18. Please let's hurry up. First Thessalonians 2.18. The apostle was speaking and he opened us up to something very very profound i want us to read together ready one to read wherefore we would have come to you even i your breakthrough but what happened help me please once and again your breakthrough would have come to you your prayers answered already but satan hindered us satan can attempt to hinder men from meeting men satan can attempt to hinder things from meeting men are we together now it's part of the reasons why we pray we pray because in the place of prayer we create our own climate and we command the forces of darkness we enforce the victory of christ and we clear the air for believers to receive the fullness of the blessings of God. The last reason, very quickly, and then we'll pray. Why do people experience limitations in their lives? They trivialize and ignore the place of spiritual empowerment. This is the last reason. The last reason, I've given you four reasons. Why people remain in perpetual defeat. They trivialize and ignore for many the place of spiritual empowerment. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. We celebrate the anointing of the Holy Spirit in this place. Not just the ministry of the Spirit. As you know we are on a series the Holy Spirit. He said finally my brethren haven't told you all these other things. Finally my brethren be strong in the Lord be strong in the Lord and in the power of his. The word might there means his resources his resources the power that comes with his resources. There are arsenals there are mysteries. There are supplies of graces and possibilities that make God God. And the Bible says we should be strong in that. The power, our access to those things is what gives us strength in this kingdom. Are we together now? There are powers of darkness that will arise and contend with believers. Once and again, Psalm 66 verse 3. Psalm 66, verse 3. Let's read. One to go. Say unto God, How terrible art thou in thy ways. Help me please. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. 
brothers and sisters it takes power to reign in this kingdom it takes power to reign in this wicked world it will take power for you to rise and not compromise yet prosper it takes power it's more, it takes more than sincerity in a wicked and a depraved world are you going to bribe? no I will stand in for truth that means there is no promotion for you and you can remain there for decades are you from so 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 state no I'm not no you are not qualified for this position human sentiments it takes power to defy the wickedness of men takes power hallelujah takes power takes power to build a ministry much more than wisdom it takes the ability of God it says rabbi John 3 verse 1 we know that thou art a man Nicodemus seeing the mighty works of Jesus Christ they criticized him in the day but he smuggled his way to Jesus in the night and said rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from God for no man can do these things except God be with him the anointing of the Holy Spirit is God's authorization upon a man to represent him God's authorization the anointing of the Holy Spirit is God's ability listen the capacity to produce God's result God's dimension of result can only be produced by his dimension of power and grace we trivialize the anointing because we have been taught that the anointing is for men of God and since I'm not being called into the fivefold ministry I do not need the anointing no brothers and sisters hear me the anointing the anointing I've said it again I want it to become a revelation in you that the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference the difference between a man who rises out of death and out of every challenge is the anointing a thriving ministry and a struggling one the anointing a thriving career and a struggling one the anointing the anointing will be the difference between your next level and where you are now don't trivialize it don't say it is unnecessary no the anointing is God's advantage in the life of the believer it truly is an advantage I think it was the last set of school of ministry students I was teaching them when we were doing pneumatology I was teaching them about the anointing and I said this is our wicked world people ask you who is your father it's an iron bender who is your mother she sells a car somewhere in the road no you cannot rise we are victims of the wickedness the sentiments the ethno-religious biases of men in a world where people want you to bring something you need the advantage not an advantage brothers and sisters the anointing can take you where anything can take anybody the anointing others may get there because of their connections others may get there because uncle so 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 went and once you are there they ask you how did you come and then you laugh God's ability God's ability is working in me. It's working in me. It's God's ability. God's ability is working in me. It's working in me. That will be your testimony. Is God's ability? Is God's ability working in me? The anointing will always produce supernatural results. You've heard me say it. If it is the Lord's doing, then it must be marvelous in our eyes. If it is a man's doing, it is natural and logical but brothers and sisters when your result defies the natural progression there is another agency other than you when your results in any area of life listen they called Jesus they said he was 
casting out devils by Beelzebub. He said, if I use Beelzebub, the prince of demons, by whom do your fathers, their fathers were casting out devils. They fraternized with the realm of the spirit, accessed powers higher than a human power, and were producing results. That statement shows that no man can do supernatural things without the assistance of a dimension higher than that which you know. Yes. In this day and age, brothers and sisters, the world is waiting for supernatural outcomes. You don't just tell somebody be healed. That's arrogance without the anointing. Now, let me show you something. I've taught you this again and again, but I feel like doing it. Let me use a thousand naira if you would permit me, please. Look at this. Because so many people really do not understand the operation of the anointing. I want you to learn this, please. By the grace of God and by the privilege of His grace, I can tell you I understand the workings of the anointing. I want you to pay attention and listen closely. I may not boast of any other thing, but I can tell you I understand how this thing works. Listen, the anointing works like money. Watch this. If I give you, Ejimi, 1,000 Naira, do you know that there are many things this can buy? 1,000 Naira can buy this, but 1,000 Naira cannot buy a car. Are we together now? So when, if your desire is to buy a car, you need multiples of 1,000. It is good that you have 1,000, but it is not sufficient to draw to your life the result. This is how the anointing is. Don't say I'm anointed. It must be to the level that is capable. I thought this thing is energy. Physics defines power as work done per unit time. That's the definition of the anointing. God's ability that is dissipated per unit time to produce supernatural results. That's the anointing. Listen, if I try to lift this, it doesn't mean I don't have energy. It means the energy dissipated per unit time is small. So I need another agency to assist me. Is that true, believers? This is how it is. So it is not that the name of Jesus is there, it's not working. It is not that the anointing is not working. The situation that you are confronted with, this is why grace and peace is multiplied. Because there are situations that defy that current level. So he says, grace and peace be multiplied to you. Why is it multiplied? How God anointed Jesus, Acts 10, 30. Look at the extent to which he anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power let me show you how to be a blessing when you contend with the spirit to carry a dimension of grace and unction sufficient to solve most if not all the problems that you will find this is how you will be a blessing if Dan Gote comes here now and decides to give everybody one one million how, do you, how many of you know that's not a prayer point for him? Because it is within his capacity. Are we together? If Koinonia decides to give everybody here one, one million, we'll have a problem somewhere. Correct? Not because we don't have money. It is the limit of our capacity. So it's not when, when this guy has a problem. It's like a shop. There is a dimension of anointing required to solve it. So when you come to help him, it's not just that you laid hands, he may even fall down. But the money is short. What do you need? More. More. More of the same thing. Not more of a different thing. More of what? The same thing. So Benihim can climb the stage and he's not even held the mic and 40 people rise out of the wheelchair. You see, that's... The anointing upon his life makes him see clearer the might and the possibilities of God. When you are not heavily anointed, you create a wrong picture of God because you struggle for little results and it looks like that's how much God tried to release that result. But watch another man who comes with grace and unction and you watch ease as a testimony. It's called capacity. The anointing makes God look limitless in the affairs of men this is why regardless of the results here and there that God produces we still remain in the secret place because there is no brothers and sisters there are people scattered here tonight if I ask everybody to come and hold the mic 
People will not travel from end to end. There are people following from over 45 nations of the world. They are not sitting down and wasting their time. No. No. People want solutions. Now a man of God gets up here called Joshua Selman. I would be a wicked man if I have not stayed with God sufficient enough at least at the level of the growth to be able to partner with the Holy Spirit. That's why we cry for his mercy. Because there are many situations that we need results beyond our current levels of dealings with God. And we need the mercy of God to superimpose the current level of grace that we carry. That's why sometimes I tell you that God does not heal people just through a man's faith. He switches to the covenant that that man has with him. And it becomes a platform upon which he reaches men. Are we together? Tonight, let me tell you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that there is grace to cause your mountains to look like valleys. Yes, yes. It doesn't take time. It only takes time when an insufficient dimension of the anointing presents it. Learn this about the anointing. The anointing can greatly misrepresent God. It's like a television that is not well tuned. It will make you think the producers were that poor until you take the same video to a clearer HD television. And that's when you watch the artistry of those people. The anointing can misrepresent the capacity of God. Hallelujah. I take time to teach like this. Because the miracles and all this will not take time. Once your heart is aligned to receive, then you will receive miracles upon miracles. Are we together? This is how he gets glory. When he finds men who are heavily anointed. Please hear me. Never be caught up by the results you currently have now no matter how great i tell you you ask the lord my work with god is as if i don't have an iota of his anointing in my life there is a standard and there is a capacity that i'm working with god and i seek to get i have seen them in dreams and visions and i did not see this current level we are trusting god for levels where before koinonia starts before the first prayer point half of the people who come sick are already healed completely one woman one of our mothers i met a new mother new wonderful mother in portacourt lovely people those of you from portacourt i know they are listening to me now they are following me lovely lovely woman i love you with all my heart and um, the whole family i mean they are just into this ministry with their heart she donated her car and everything for them to use for the program and she shared a testimony i think it was yesterday that touched me she had been having some kind of respiratory problems and so when they picked me from the airport her children insisted that she would sit down at that same place and that woman said she just sat down and the children drove her home brothers and sisters that was the end of it now listen listen when you understand the anointing there is something interesting about it when you understand the anointing and you are heavily anointed the more heavy you are anointed the will your will plays little role in its release it becomes wherever ask the woman with the issue of blood jesus did not even listen now he was not planning she just touched him and jesus said who touched me the anointing didn't say jesus can i flow no. so you can be in a restaurant you are eating and all of a sudden now you will never believe what i'm saying if you are casually anointed if you truly are anointed you become a blessing you greet somebody just shake his hand and that day he has more customers than he can ever imagine now even you you do not know till he tells you an effulgence of spiritual possibilities you your life has become a gateway and a portal revealing a dimension of possibility that is not affordable to the natural man i welcome you tonight to this place where god has chosen by his spirit to reveal the multifaceted dimensions of his grace and glory please rise up on your feet oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. 
I want you to just pray two prayer points from the depth of your heart. Number one, I'd like you to insist and say, Lord, I release my faith. There is no challenge I came here with tonight that will return back. Go ahead and pray. Prophesy, declare it. I wave every captivity goodbye. Jesus is Lord. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Shala prakato sete katapanda shabrakada bala. Shikiti paratos kapratas kalabasya. Pray. I believe in the mighty God. Dera na 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 shela na. Shikada bala kataprakato shikiti. Shibres kete shalabanda katai. I have found David my servant and with my holy oil have I anointed him. It's a realm of your glory. It's a realm of your grace. I can see your mighty power moving in this place. We're in the presence of angels with God's glory on the wings. And like the voice of many waters. I can hear the angels sing You are holy You are holy You are holy You are holy Ta-da-da 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 One last prayer point father take me to a new dimension there is always more lift your voice and pray take me to a new dimension take me to a new dimension are you praying take me to a new level let me not need to tell people that I came before your presence let there be an evidence let there be a testimony Nina ka wo ya bo sarki salama Nina ka wo ya bo
life will never be the same. I want to pray for you. Listen. I want you to trust God. Please hear me, especially for the visitors here. I want you to trust God that the forces and the yokes that stand between you and your destiny, you have to believe that they will live now. Are we together? I want you to believe God. There are people already receiving their deliverances and miracles. I want to pray for you now. My heart is heavy because in this season and in this time, God wants to set people free. Some of you may not know the causes of the situations, the challenges, the things you go through. You have prayed, you have fasted. God has brought you here tonight and he will give you a dramatic miracle. Are we together now? Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Jesus, the presence of God is Listen, I want to pray for you. I see a writing. I just see a writing in the realm of the spirit. And I see great breakthrough. This is what I see. Great breakthrough. There is a grace that is coming on people now. The Lord is starting off with us tonight. Bringing strange breakthrough to people. I want to pray now. At the count of three. In the name that is above all names. I decree and declare. In the name of the Lord God whose I am. Right now, at the count of three, I release that grace. I command every devil standing on the way to anyone's breakthrough. I command that you leave right now. In the name of Jesus. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. One, two, three. Go now. Go now. Bring them out. Shake it, take a Inside and outside. hallelujah lift your hands my god i still see these breakthroughs i'm seeing doors opening in the realm of the spirit listen i'm seeing at least 17 people 17 people i'm going to pray and the power of god will come upon you strange doors opening right now in the name of jesus i declare by the count of three one two three open now Open now, I command it. I declare it now. Now, open doors by the Spirit of God. Open doors, open doors. Sato Seketa, my God, doors opening over lives, opening over destinies, opening by the Spirit of God. By the Spirit of God. Mighty 
angelic activities and overflow one, overflow one, mighty angelic activities. I see massive deliverances coming upon men and women. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I declare it. Please lift your hands and pray. The Lord is showing me people here with strange delays. You love God but strange delays. I'm seeing like arrows in the spirit. And this is not from darkness. It will come upon you. Once it comes upon you, know that that delay will end. Right now, in the name of Jesus, the Lord is asking me to stretch my hands. As I stretch my hands right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, where are they? Men and women who have been delayed strangely right now right now right now i command that light and power that light and power ending delays now mighty in this place mighty in this place you are mighty in this place Mighty in this place, you are mighty in our I'm seeing something strange in the spirit coming upon sisters. I'm seeing a strange grace for speed. Just sisters, sisters, I'm seeing this. And the Lord is asking me to prophesy it. As soon as I prophesy it, there is a strange unction coming on ladies for strange speed. I see this in the realm of the spirit. Now, Lord, I place the word of God upon this prophecy. And I declare, ladies, step into speed now. Supernatural speed. Run like Elijah. I command it. I decree it. In the name of Jesus. Strength speed. Strength speed. Strength speed. It's coming on you now. Like the dew of heaven. Coming on you now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is opening my eyes to a vision now, and I'm seeing keys being given to people. Keys, listen, keys. It will come on you like fire. I see keys these keys are solutions and strategies solutions and strategies solutions and strategies you will help me shout that name Jesus again I see keys being handed over to people according to the grace and mercy of God now Lord I pray that even as you have shown me whoever should be a recipient of this spiritual blessing I decree and declare that it will come upon their lives now are you ready at the count of three Get ready now, my God, my God, my God. One, two, three. Take these kids. Take these kids. So break your tail.
I will pray for you but let me just do what the Lord is asking me to do I've told you many of you wonder when you see me do this particular thing where I just mention a state and the Lord begins to touch people from that state it's a sign and wonder you see these things they are operations of the spirit because the Lord is opening my eyes right now I'm seeing a map of Nigeria and I'm seeing the hand of God on south 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 that entire region now now all those who come from that region south 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 a miracle now Ending captivities by the Spirit of the Living God. Holy, 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 holy. Hallelujah. There is somebody in overflow too. You are holding a picture. You are holding photos. Please come. Overflow too by the roadside. Let the person come. Let the person come quickly. You are holding a picture. The Lord is showing me someone. Please let, let that person, whoever he is or she is, please quickly. You are holding a picture. Run. Come. You are wearing like blue. Uh, is it blue or black now? Who is that? Come. Don't worry mama i'm going to pray for you where is your daughter ma no mike i'm looking at you hold on is this her i'm looking at you and the holy spirit is taking me and i'm in kano where is she she's at kano where is she that's what i'm saying she's at kano and the lord why 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 are you holding her picture is she up there up to now she have made that get married uh -uh. and this, this day she's sick this is what i'm saying this is what god wants to destroy because i'm seeing her in kano and you are standing in for her yes i'm supposed to pray for those outside but i saw this and the lord is saying i should minister to you go and tell her that the lord brings her life this sickness is over <laughs> hallelujah sir where are you coming from mina niger state niger state Thank the Lord because your car would have had an accident on the way coming. And the Lord has brought you deliverance. Is this your family? Yes, sir. This is your family. Yes, sir. One, two, three, four. How many children? Four children. Have you stopped giving birth? Do you think this is all? I'm looking in a vision and I'm seeing one more, a baby girl. After this. Hold my hand, sir. But the Lord is going to, I'm seeing you have serious problem with finances very serious you are not a lazy man even you you cannot explain how you got into this kind of trouble but i want to pray for you because the lord is saying i should release you from this hold my hand sir i bring you life in the name of jesus christ you will go back and return with a strange this man's life will change like day and night in the name of jesus christ mama please come i don't know this woman but I'm asked to pray for you. I look at you in the realm of the spirit and I'm seeing two hands like this. You're a woman of prayer. This is what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit. Look at me, man. You love God sincerely, but many things are going around. They are scattered in your life. And you have been asking, can God come? Can God step in? Even when you were there, you were praying that prayer. I heard you praying and the Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's giving you rest today. He's giving you supernatural rest. Madam, please stand up. Please stand up, ma. Please stand up. Where are you coming from, madam? It's from Sabongari. You are coming. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, your life will turn around and that of your family. This is by the Spirit of God, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Have I prayed for you, darling? Come. In the
the name of Jesus I end captivity from your life by the power of the Holy Spirit right now in the name of Jesus I end captivity don't worry I mustn't speak to you as I lay my hands on you I want to believe there's someone you are outside your baby is sick run with the person and come now you are outside your baby is sick run with the person and come now that is sir can I pray for you sir I'm going to pray for you and the Lord is going to give you peace and the Lord is going to raise people to help you now sincerely speaking I want to be honest with you it is not within my power to stop you from getting married I we generally can only advise because you see let me teach you something especially as a pastor there are people who are following us from 45 nations of the world and when you are ministering sensitive things like this um, they are listening and every territory has laws are we together now things are a bit flexible in Nigeria but if I were in America and I'm talking to this man like this and saying don't marry another wife the son can go and sue me or the ministry so this is the reason why it's not maybe lack of faith are we together sir it is not within my power and I have no right to judge you I can only declare the counsel of God and pray for you um, this is very important when you are speaking to people although by the spirit it is important to be wise in your communication so that you do not say things that will bring you serious problem mama you are praying and you are still telling God there is one more thing you want to tell me I'm hearing your prayers come what is it give her the mic is that true you are standing there and you are praying and you are saying you wish that I can call you again there is one more issue what is the issue Marriage, your daughter's marriage. Uh, ma Mama, let's let's pray. If that is the issue, you are a good woman. I want to pray for your daughters, and God said that's not what you need. Hold it. What you need is destiny. Help us, Mama. As I'm looking at you now, they're about to throw you out of the house because your rent has expired. Give her the mic. Is that true? Yes. Sir. You need somebody to help you. Yes. Sir. Seriously. Yes, sir. If not, the time will come. Even what to eat will become an issue. The Lord said, I should tell you, forget this issue of marriage. Hmm? The major issue is the ministry of destiny helpers. Amen. Lord, send people. Amen. You see, we must pray that God will grant us grace so that we can help our mothers. It's a terrible thing for a woman at this age. To be praying as if she never had a child as if she never trained anybody that's why we cause the spirit of delay that makes people to be established very late now according to scripture a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children but sadly being as the situation is we must be able to turn back and be a blessing to these our loved ones a woman like this at her age should not be going around trying to look for food to eat again I pray that your loved ones will not look for food to eat. That God himself will empower you and establish you and send you help. Mama, don't cry. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Lord will help you. By the power of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. See me after the service, madam. In Jesus' name. Thank you. I pray for you, sir. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord change your life, change your situation right now. In the name of Jesus. You are the one with the child? Please come. We are going to pray for the sick now very quickly. What's wrong with him? He's, he's running temperature this evening. Just this evening? Yes, sir. But he has been having persistent cough. Cough. Coffee. Let's pray for him. Lord Jesus, I pray for this, your dear son. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I decree and declare that this boy be made whole right now. And for you, his mother, I command that everything the devil wants to put in your stomach, let it leave you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Please, why are they here? Mama, come. Please stand up. The Lord is visiting you. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's taking away reproach and pain. Amen from your life Amen. this is what he's saying please stand up please stand up man that he's rolling away reproach 
you see as God speaks to one person he's only using one person as a point of contact to speak to everyone it doesn't mean that we have to call you the time will not let that happen are we together now for instance madam are you from Kaduna who is from Kaduna uh -uh, uh -uh, not just a person a woman there is a mama from Kaduna that I want to speak to now is a young lady now I, I, a, a mama like elderly woman there's a woman who came here from Kaduna not a young lady please I, I want to just speak to that person very quickly mommy look at me you have gone through so much pain the Lord is saying I should tell you it's your children that will wipe your tears it's your children that will wipe your tears may the Lord raise them and may they wipe your tears I pray for you in Jesus name why is she here you are the deeper life um, lady you are you are a member of deeper life are you sure hold my hands lord jesus i pray that you do a miracle in her life right now put your hand on your stomach god is taking something away from your stomach now i curse it something is leaving you now as i hold your hands you are even surprised even you you would not have known that there's something here I'm seeing like a malignant growth, something that will later develop to a fibroid. I curse it by the God of heaven right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let it be over now in Jesus' name. Come, my brother. You are James. I will pray for all of you, but you love Jesus. You love Jesus. I have to pray for you. Come. What's your name? Your name is James. Do you love Jesus? I prayed for one boy, one miracle service. Very bad friends. And I'm still seeing it again. I don't know where that guy is. And the Lord is asking that we pray for him again. You see, all these gentlemen, you have to be careful. It's important for us to be serious with God so that you don't land yourself in the police station. Hold my hands. I pray for you. The Lord is bringing restoration to your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Supernatural restoration, sir. I pray for you you will not I don't know what is making I'm seeing a thermometer up and down your chest and the Lord is saying I should rebuke anything that has to do with your blood pressure in Jesus name I command that it leaves you right now by the power of the Holy Spirit I pray for all of you come sir let me just make contact with you very quickly in the name of Jesus Christ Hasana Hasana, we're going to pray for the sick now. We have to be very fast. Hasana. Hasana, I'm seeing someone with the name Hasana. Is there someone like that? Please, very quickly. Hasana, whether you're inside, outside. Hasana, from Kogi State. Hasana. Are you not Sado's sister? Is your name Hasana? You are sure? Look at me. The Lord is bringing restoration. Restoration. The Lord is saying I should stretch my hands on you. In the name of Jesus. May you be a benefactor of the mercy of God. The mercy of the living God. The mercy of the living God. The mercy of the living God. The mercy. Yes, it's alright if your names are Hassan. The mercy of the living God. Your name too? Your name is Hassana. Come. I'm interested in what I'm seeing. Hold my hands, my dear. The Lord is bringing breakthrough to your family. There is a spirit that oppresses you and it must leave you now. Go! Now! In the name of Jesus, I curse you by the God of heaven. Let her go. Never to return. In the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> She's afraid already. Hold my hands. Hold my hands. Hold my hands. The light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. This lady, you see, she's smiling, but there is a serious case. There is a very mad, wild spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. There's a reason why I ask her to hold my hands. This lady has been tormented and oppressed in a way that you cannot imagine. Now I command that spirit. This is koinonia. I curse you by the God of heaven. Be gone now. Let her go now. 
in the name of Jesus Christ you would see a gentle lady like this and she would not know what is responsible for her life this doesn't mean she's a devil it doesn't mean she's possessed no it's just the advantage that Satan takes over the lives of people I command in the name of Jesus let me tell you what is wrong with this lady is not a little issue this thing doesn't show on the face so you just see people smiling but they are victims of a lot of things let me pray for you my dear come hold my hands in the name of Jesus Christ I bring you life now life come the devil wants to bring pain to your life hold my hands I command it to come to an end now pain repeated cycles of tragedies I curse it by the God of heaven an anointing is coming upon you and the Lord himself is giving you a supernatural miracle right now there are three ladies I just had the cry of children and there are three ladies you are standing in for your families now as I'm speaking the anointing of the Holy Spirit is going to come upon them standing in for their families standing in for their families standing in for their families let the oppression in your family end now this girl's family has gone through all kinds of things this is koinonia i bring you the life and power that is in the name of jesus now this is what we're going to do please listen very carefully um you know that we take out time to minister more specifically to people i wish that we had all the time but we have to work with time and um we are going to pray for the sick now please listen whether you are inside or outside if you are trusting god listen please whether you are inside or outside aside from these particular cases if you are trusting god for fruitfulness for your loved one or any other person whether you are inside or outside please don't come in at random I want you to come in I want to minister to you myself aside from that now we're going to pray for the sick overflow one please all of you should walk to the front of your projector you'll be ministered to overflow two and the ones extension of overflow four please walk to the projector stand outside overflow three walk to your projector stand outside very quickly and those inside here I want you to just walk out to me very quickly we're going to minister to people in that order there are so many people it has pleased the Lord to make this place a place of supernatural miracles please it, it doesn't matter where you stand if you are outside don't come in just move to your projector outside hallelujah blessed be the name of the Lord we're going to minister to you now you'll be very fast whilst we're doing that please your prayer request if you've not written your prayer request or that of your loved ones those online you're yet to write do that quickly so that the ushers can follow and then we'll do that very quickly every other thing from here will now be the prophetic declarations there are so many people inside and outside we are going to pray for the sick the lord has given us the grace he's given us the capacity there are people going through all kinds of things and um, in as much as we teach you how to live in health and wholeness we cannot allow the devil buffet you some of you are standing in for your loved ones some of you are standing here with incurable diseases HIV you've heard the testimonies there is nothing that has not been healed in this house sir the Lord is going to heal you you will not die that virus will not kill you you hear what I'm saying I don't mean to embarrass you I hope you are not embarrassed because I look at you if I don't pray for you I'm seeing very soon this thing will eat you up I don't have to say more than that but you know what I'm talking about there is no virus there is no situation that has not been healed in this place and you know we don't announce miracles if they are not medically verified so that it doesn't look like people are just faking things so believe the Lord especially if you are here for the first time it doesn't matter who ministers to you I just want you to believe there is a corporate grace that is at work here to minister and bring miracles to people will be very fast please those outside you'll be very fast uh pastor jimmy let's see um you handle overflow one outside um pastor alpha overflow two um pastor femi let's see pastor femi 
and promise go to overflow three mike you walk with a jimmy outside there and then um, have i told you where to go to okay so we'll would go in that order i'm sure that i may just walk alone here there are a number of people who are not here we give those opportunities because it's also an opportunity to train and build people please quickly let's go father we agree that the corporate grace you have released upon this house and this family for miracles let it be released regardless of who ministers we minister in the name of jesus we bring that name that is above all names over every situation let your anointing speak this is the moment oh god where you cure the incurable this is the moment where you step into the lives of people let it be a quick walk let everyone here return with testimonies in jesus name i'm going to begin to minister to you but there's one person here the anointing of the spirit will come upon you so strongly that will be the signal of the grace to minister here right now this is the, don't don't mind me i do all my crazy things um let's just walk by the spirit someone here in front the anointing of the spirit will come on you in such a mighty way the moment that happens then i begin to pray for the sick now thank you jesus for your mighty power that's the person down there so i can pray for you now bless you father thank you all right guys let's give god the very best please you can sit down you can sit down while you are sitting let's be praying because as soon as i'm done praying for the sick we'll address other issues very quickly so that we can finish on time the lord bless you in jesus name Please help them, whether you are an Osha or not. New levels. There are people God is fishing out here. New dimensions. Shebros kaparu shabradi salatush. Shebros katabrandega dego shalabradi asha. Engreto susabrikatia. It's a call to your spirit man. It's a call to your spirit man. This is not for everybody. It's a call to your spirit man. If it's your call, you will hear it. 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 You must hear it. If it's your call, you will hear it. Your spirit will pick the signals of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The spirit of prophecy is upon that man. Who can stand against the Lord? No one. No one. Who can stand against our King? No one. No one. No one. Praying on the request 
is not a ritual it's not a ritual no but listen brothers and sisters we bring this prayer request before the God of heaven representing the pain of people representing the mockery of darkness and you've seen all sorts of miracles that has come from here and we're going to pray now the Lord is asking me to take off my shoes we're going to pray right now please I want you to participate I take time to explain this so that we all understand um, I may not be able to minister to everybody one by one but this is a representation of the cry and the request of people the other people are ministering to those outside don't worry those outside if they are still ministering to you just hang on those who um, have been ministered to already please just follow your screen can we stretch our hands in one minute and I like you to just pray in the spirit pray in the spirit to the God of heaven who answers prayers Jesus Jesus the son of the living God Jibrakato Salabranda Gadabash Mali Brando Zibragadash. Now arise, O Lord, come to your resting place. Brood upon these requests. Let there be mighty, mighty, mighty miracles. Mighty miracles. Jesus Christ I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that every request here represented tonight is turned into a testimony it's turned into a testimony in the name of Jesus the Son of the living God every request here no matter how impossible is turned into strange and speak these testimonies in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that for every request you have written here and all the ones online I release my faith and in the name of Jesus I declare let this be the last time you will submit this request the last time you will submit this request let this be the last time you will submit this request unto him that answers prayers the one who has beckoned on us to approach his throne without fear to approach with boldness and confidence we decree and declare in the name of jesus most high the son of the living god every request here i say again is turned into a testimony in the name of jesus turned into a testimony by the power of the Holy Spirit turned into a testimony by the power of the Holy Spirit turned into a testimony hallelujah this is the last phase of the meeting I want to pray and prophesy upon your life it will never tire me to say this in my opinion the greatest part of this service 
is what is about to happen now because believers are used to charismatism falling down rolling and so on and so forth we many times downplay the place of prophecy prophecy is very powerful and have taught us that there are two dimensions to the operation of the prophetic there is the revelatory dimension of the prophetic that God allows by his spirit to bring comfort to bring access to light and information that works hand in hand with the gift of the word of knowledge but the greater and more superior dimension of the prophetic is the creative dimension of prophecy where the word of God makes realities that have no business happening to happen the word creates a scene and adds it to the pages of your life so that something you had no business walking in you will all of a sudden find yourself walking in it and remember i told us the last discussion before we began to pray that one of the greatest reasons why people are limited is because of inadequate dimension of the anointing so alongside this prayer i'm going to be praying a prayer of impartation there are people th this thing is not just for showmanship listen if you know god and you love him and you see the needs of people you will covet the unction and the grace of god this has nothing to do with showmanship when people begin to make showmanship out of it is is inaccurately used hallelujah let's correct things now let's recreate things now Please lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive. Rejoice, rejoice for Emmanuel has come to us, his Israel. In the name that is above all names. I decree and declare right now every door that has been closed over anyone here in the name of Jesus the son of the living God I command that door be open now be open now be open now The Bible says, have you heard of this saying that a city gives birth in one day? But it says, as soon as Zion travails, it says, she shall give birth to son. I decree and declare, whatever you have been incubating for a long time, revealed to you by the spirit, but yet to manifest, there is grace for performance. And I command that you must have a manifestation now. I decree it. I declare it by the power of the Holy Ghost. Manifested blessings, manifested miracles. Hallelujah. I decree and declare where you have to struggle for everything, labor for everything, I open you up to a dimension of prepared blessings. I open you up to a dimension of prepared blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know who has despised the grace of God upon your life. He said, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. I prophesy to you, may an unction come upon your life tonight that will distinguish you. I decree it. I declare it. May an unction come upon your life tonight that distinguishes you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Elijah told Ahab, saddle your ass and run. For I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. And Ahab was already light years ahead of Elijah. But the Bible says the hand of the Lord 
came upon Elijah and all of a sudden he started running on barefoot listen the Bible says that the disciples were six hours ahead of Jesus moving on their boat and Jesus got up and started walking on water there are many of you there are several things that have limited your pace I want to prophesy speed for you there is a grace that makes men to pursue to overtake to recover I speak to you in the name of Jesus as I pray for you the anointing of God will come on some of you and you will want to run physically please hold them I release that grace that grace for speed receive that grace now speed 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 Shikoto Soto Balata no delay I command speed speed of accomplishment speed of accomplishment in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah Isaiah 6 it says arise shine for your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you it says for darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people it says but upon you the glory of the Lord shall arise verse 3 says Gentiles you won't look for them again Gentiles shall come to your light and even their arrogant kings to the brightness of your rising it says where you have been deserted so that no man passes through you I will make you an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations I decree and declare from today every gift you have every dream every ability that is dormant and not being blessed and rewarded I command Gentiles to come to your light now. I command Gentiles to come to your light, to come to your business, to come to your profession, to come to your ministry. I make it so by the Spirit of the Living God. hallelujah and David said is there any man of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness and they went to bring a crippled man called Mephibosheth and when he came he sat down with David and he says you will continue to dine with me here in the name of Jesus where your strength cannot take you Satos Kapratikata where your current level of achievement cannot take you I decree and declare may the hand of God that picks a man from a dunghill to a place of prominence may that hand pick you to the next level of your life may that hand pick you to the next level of your life hallelujah it says and I will restore to you the years alas master for it was borrowed they borrowed an axe head and it fell double trouble and he said no don't worry where fell it I want to speak to people here who have lost things you have lost relationships you have lost money you have lost opportunities there is a system in the kingdom where they can call back things he said they are taken for a prey and none say yet restore in the name of Jesus by the name of he who can manipulate time and make yesterday become tomorrow and tomorrow become yesterday I command a restoration now I command a restoration now I command Hear me anyone here called jobless you are looking for a job or any of your loved ones in the parable that Jesus gave he saw some people sitting idle he said why sittest thou idle he said no man employ us and he said go to the vineyard when he speaks there is always a job in the name of Jesus I create a space for you now in the name of the Lord Jesus I create a space for you now I speak anyone here or anyone standing for any family that has had delay especially in the area of fruitfulness he said be fruitful the first command he gave man 
right now in the name of Jesus hear me Mary said how shall these things be seeing that I know not a man he didn't say Joseph will come he said the power of the highest shall overshadow you therefore I prophesy everything that represents unfruitfulness it dies now in the name of Jesus it dies now in the name of Jesus I speak to everyone God worried carry your children now carry your children now every aspect of your life that represents barrenness be it in the works of your hands be it in your finances in the name of Jesus the son of the living God I command supernatural results supernatural results supernatural results I pray for those who wrote jam and didn't like their results I change the result now I change the result now I change the results now hallelujah every family here that has refused to move forward I don't care for what reason in the name that is above all names your accomplishment for the next one month will dwarf what you have done in the last five years in the name of Jesus believe it help them please believe it in the name of Jesus hallelujah this is one of my favorite blessings to people the ministry of destiny help us I discovered brothers and sisters hear me that it always flows from God through men everything money can buy relationships can buy it there are needless battles needless battles that relationships can solve the distance between you and the next testimony may just be a relationship but you see no destiny helper comes by his by himself they are called they are called they never come by themselves they do not even know he says the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon in the name of Jesus whoever must speak for you in high places in this season whoever must endorse the testimony of God upon your life as a man of God as a businessman whoever must advocate for you where your voice cannot reach I prophesy to the north I prophesy to the south I prophesy to the east and west wherever your destiny helpers are I command them to come into your life now hallelujah listen I know a woman years ago when we held our crusade in 2009 in Abuja it was her camp that we used she's not even educated but she had access to two people a very wealthy family that needed a miracle and she prayed for them and they became destiny helpers let me tell you something the easiest way to be wealthy is through relationships somebody can get up by the spirit and make you a partaker of his blessings are we together now we've discussed on finances and all the principles but brothers and sisters there is a dimension of speed that God can give a man and this is to help you be established fast so that you can focus on the purposes of the kingdom there is this spirit that makes people to be established so late it's not that they are lazy you cannot be established over 100,000 per month. Believe me. You cannot be established over 50,000 per month. You are too generous to even keep that money. And whilst you give, God will orchestrate men, but we have learned that Satan can hinder them. I'm praying specifically for finances. I want to invoke the mystery of divine supply. There is such a reality like supernatural provision. This ministry is a, is a tearsome testimony of what happens when men covenant with themselves to make sure you rise he said men came to david in the cave of adulam entered a covenant with themselves that they must make him king you don't need plenty of people you just need one person anointed and directed wherever your financial helper is 
in the name that is above all names i declare that between now and the next two weeks of june may they appear in your life may they appear in your life may they appear in your life hallelujah every dying business here every dying career every dying ministry that is as though you are not called i give life to that which is dying now i give life to that which is dying now hallelujah father it is my prayer from my heart for your people that by miracle service june you will return here 10 times better literally 10 times better hallelujah please lift your hands i want to release something there are people here you love god i gave you an example of this anointing there needs to be an upgrade you see the thing with the anointing is if it is there it is there if it is not there it is not there it's as simple as that the anointing is a very obvious quality of god it's not something you struggle to see there are many of us especially pastors we are trusting God for certain dimensions of grace. It can manifest as anything. Wisdom, strategies, supernatural grace, the grace for performance. I want to pray for you. Activations are very necessary to drive people into great results. I stretch my hands right now. In the name of Jesus, every dimension of the anointing that is available in this house every dimension from prophetic dimensions Shabo Sikata there are people receiving it now there are others is being activated others is being multiplied in the name of Jesus I open you up now strange levels of the prophetic strange levels the eyes that see and the ears that hear the impulses of the spirit I pray right now the manifestation of the spirit of revelation receive it right now revelation inside 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 take it now take it now revelation revelation into the mysteries of the kingdom hallelujah every operation of the gift of the spirit that is barren in your life are needed for your destiny i stretch my hands and i activate it now receive it right now i activate it now i activate it now i activate it now by the power of the holy spirit i release upon you right now fresh mantle for leadership supernatural dimension of the leadership grace let it come upon you you may be weak but it will distinguish you in the name of Jesus Christ. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. It is he that giveth thee power. Brothers and sisters, there is such a thing called the power, the anointing, the unction, the capacity to create an atmosphere around you that attracts wealth. I don't know how many people it will please the Lord to release this grace but I stretch my hands let it please the God of heaven to bring men into this dimension right now receive it now the power to prosper the power to prosper you may be weak but the power to prosper bring in favor the ministry of men into your life hallelujah I don't know what has brought your prayer life down but right now in the name of Jesus fresh fire upon your altar fresh fire upon your altar capacity to pray in the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ hear me whoever fights you goes down instantly I say it again whoever fights you whether in the secret or the open goes down instantly It says you shall call 
on Aaron and his sons. He said, and you shall take your honor and give him. Honor is a mantle. It's transferable. Let me tell you, this thing called honor is not about accomplishment. There is a grace that makes people distinguished. I pray for you from today. That grace for honor, I release it upon your life. May you be honored at the gates of your destiny. May you be strangely honored at the gates of your destiny. Whoever has said over his dead body for you to move forward, tonight may their prayers be answered. Yes. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points and we're done. I pray for your family. We believe in family in this place. No matter how lifted you are, if your family is not lifted, he said, as for me and my house, we believe in family. We pray for our children, whether in the womb or born. We pray. I prophesy over every family here that the devil is trying to corrupt the testimony of God's faithfulness. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, supernatural lifting for every family. 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 And finally, I pray for you. In a way you have never seen, whoever looks at your face, I compel them to favor you. Listen, the Bible says, Esther found favor on everyone that looked at her. For as long as you made contact with Esther and you looked at her face, you were compelled by an anointing. Believe me, I have seen this thing work in my life. I prophesy to you, men who have no business blessing you as they look at you, I compel it from their spirit. May they bless and favor you. May they bless and favor you. May they bless and favor you. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting my head. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting my head. We're rounding up, but the Lord is giving me a word here. The Lord is speaking to a family here. And he's saying, I should tell you, it will be like a dream. When in three weeks, it will change your life. It will be like a dream. 21 days in three weeks, he will change your life. Whoever this is for, I release it to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is also speaking to one person. You are going to start a business next month on the 5th. And I'm seeing before 31st, it has made you a millionaire. In the name of Jesus. I'm not motivating you. I'm speaking as the Spirit is giving me unction. You don't believe it, you will never see it. Never, ever see it. Every difficulty you came here with, in the name of Jesus, you leave it down here and walk back free. In the name of Jesus. Quickly, in one minute, everyone still standing. I want to make two altar calls now, very quickly. The first, please keep standing, everybody. No moving around inside, outside, please. There are people here, men and women, who you have seen the things that the Lord has done by His Spirit. Please, let's keep standing to honor them. And whilst you watch the power of God move, the Holy Spirit began to convict you that you need to belong to this family of faith, the family of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are saying, man of God, if you will pray for me, I'm ready to completely surrender my heart to Jesus. I don't care how many times you have come out in response to an altar call. The second category of people who will join them are those who at one time you have made commitments for the Lord Jesus Christ, but you have found yourself derailing in many ways and you're saying, man of God, if you will lead me, I will run. I will run. Run to Jesus now these two categories of people i know there are people outside overflow one two three wherever you are please our time is gone i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain i'm going to count five 
wherever you are leave your seat and run now please clear the way for them one quickly quickly let's honor them as they come quickly run to jesus now please quickly inside outside young and old quickly quickly i have decided to follow jesus no turning back run to jesus no turning Please keep coming don't sit back there now look at me brothers and sisters i appreciate you for this great decision you have made the bible says as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away when you come to him he has the power to make you you have no ability to change yourself but you have the willingness to hand over your life i want to pray for you listen i don't want you to just recite this as a poem i want you to mean it from the depth of your heart standing before jesus the firstborn among we the begotten and his holy church I want you to make this confession from the depth of your heart lift your right hand as a symbol of surrender and say after me Lord Jesus say it again Lord Jesus I believe in you that you died for me you shed your blood for me you rose again for me tonight I willingly receive your life into my spirit I declare with my mouth the Lord Jesus and I confess with my heart that God raised him from the dead I declare right now that eternal life is mine I receive it into my spirit I'm free from the power of sin the flesh and Satan from today I move forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus keep your hands lifted I pray for you spirit of the living God you represent the presence of Jesus now in the name of Jesus Christ I'm praying in a very supernatural way spirit of the living God by the power of the Holy Spirit let these ones never be the same again in the name of jesus christ may they never be the same again i pray by the power of the holy spirit that their lives will be objects of praise in the name of jesus i declare your sins forgiven i declare a new life for you i break away from you every influence of darkness capable of jeopardizing the quality of god's life in you i release you to be victorious I make you victorious by the power that is in the name of Jesus hallelujah praise the Lord thank you for this great decision now I want you to follow the lady waving her hands they would um, lead you outside have a few details and then um, just communicate a few things to you please cooperate with them the Lord bless you I love you and congratulations very quickly please guide them guide them very quickly let's do this as fast as we can hello beloved in Christ we hope this message was a blessing to you I would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for